Hey guys, how's it going? Hello, Are everyone. We ready? It is finally time for another, uh, I guess, episode of the climb. Although, as you can see from my little gold bird here, I haven't done a heck of a lot of climbing this season. <laughs> no, it looks like you've been slacking on there a little bit, Dan. Like, uh, it's already halfway through the season. We're at the midpoint of season three for Yu Gi Oh! Master Duel. And yeah, actually, not much has changed in terms of the competitive <laughs> format. We're kind of looking at no new content been introduced to the game, no new events. So the decks haven't really shifted. We're still looking at a lot of Tri Brigade at the top of the list Tri Brigade, Lyralusk, Drytron, the odd Eldlick player who just wants to make everybody's life miserable as theirs. <laughs> You know, the usual jazz. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of Numeron Network and stuff also showing up, but basically the overall point I'm trying to get at is the format hasn't changed that much. It's been a bit stale, to be honest. Yeah, I, I've been trying to do this uh, win by special victory thing. I, I want this tactician title. So these are like three dailies worth of me using Exodia. And then the rest of my time was actually spent on the new solo mode that came out. And then another new solo mode that came out. We've actually had two of them. Uh, the Fairies Who Paint the Weather and the SP Deck Challenge. The Weather one's actually newer. Um, but the, these took an awful lot of my time. The, the Weather Painter one was probably the easiest solo mode I've played so far. Uh, I first tried every single thing and it was really short. Um, they actually give you like good decks this time. <laughs> you have. Oh, like... they decided not to make your life so hard. Yeah. Uh... Well, this they, time. they gave you, like, Nemesis cards to shuffle everything back and just go absolutely squirrely with, like, they gave you Access Code Talker and Appaloosa and stuff. Like, it's... it's oh, they didn't want people getting stuck. <laughs> yeah. On the contrary, though, this thing is the hardest thing added to Master Duel by a pretty wide margin so far. Um, holy saying... actual crap. Um, this, this is, like, a playthrough of the first Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Sort of... Uh, you, you do go through, like, Duelist Kingdom in, like, an abridged form, and then skip right to the Battle City Finals, and then skip right to the Ceremonial Duel at the end. Um, th there's no, like, KC Grand Championship in there, you don't play against the Valkyrie deck or anything like that. Um, it, it, it is just, it, it doesn't start at, uh, the beginning either. It's not, like, an Exodia deck versus a Blue Eyes deck. Uh, it's, like, Weevil... And then, like, Bandit Keith and Pegasus and Mai in the Battle City Finals. Like, you, you kind of just go through it really quickly. Uh, I can't even remember what the second one is. Uh, I did Magnet see Warriors. Farfa on his stream trying to do this. So it's like, the opponent's decks are, like, really well built, but yours are always terrible. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, you're, you're going against Weevil. And, like, it, they give you, like, here's your, like, Guy of the Dragon champion thing to, like, Burning Land, the Cocoon of Evolution, and, like, all that, like, iconic anime stuff. But the, uh, it, his insect deck, air quotes, is, like, just, like, this full-powered ballpark deck with, like, the ability to kill you. And, honestly, it's pretty easy. The, the Weevil one is not a problem. Neither was, like, the Mako one. Uh, Bandit Keith unbelievably difficult this took me 15 tries like this really well. this is unimaginably difficult uh the only reason i won is that he just finally didn't like open this card to summon barrel dragon from his deck for free uh he flipped something like 30 heads in a row on me like all kinds of just unbelievable nonsense he would set a monster and pass and every time I tried attacking it, it was Blast Sphere. And every time I tried not attacking it, he would flip summon a Blast Spider and kill my guy anyway. Uh, <laughs> he would always set only one back row. And if I ever MST'd it, it was Waking the Dragon. And if I attacked him without MST'ing, it was Limiter Removal. And if I set a back row and ended, it turned it into Twin Twister. I swear his cards just change what they are. <laughs> like, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they wrote something in the code to... Uh... To mess with you just to make it a bit harder just unbelievable he never flips a tails this thing flips up and he just gets like look at your opponent's hand and discard a card like multiple times and whenever i would finally get like lucky because uh the the other thing is that the deck they give you is horrible like unbelievable garbage it's like you, you could play oh, wow. polymerization and make a meteor black dragon all you want as soon as you kill his barrel dragon, he's got Desperado comes down from his hand in the battle phase, flips three heads, and nukes your entire board anyway. So it's just... It's all nonsense. Uh, the card that, like, 
you make to get through this is actually Slash Dragon, because he can survive some of the shenanigans, but ultimately, unless Keith bricks, you're gonna lose. And then... Uh... I actually haven't touched any of this yet. I've been so focused on the ladder, I uh, completely missed all this, but it seems... Is it... Here's a question, based on looking at the decks that they're giving you. Is this fun, or is this painful to play uh, So, it was a lot of fun, and felt really cool to do a lot of them. Um... But that Keith one was unbelievably frustrating. And then this one. This one only took me three tries because I very mercifully opened this and this together and was able to just summon this guy. Uh, if you don't summon this guy, I don't know how you actually win this. Uh, it's Pegasus, and he makes his tunes that are like, they can't be destroyed or targeted, and you always draw like Thousand Knives and Brain Control and can't play them. Uh, you get this to pop Toon Kingdom, but he has Bookmark in the graveyard to protect it from that. Uh, this this one is so hard that I've had several of my friends on the verge of tears. Um, one of the numbers <laughs> finally beat it yesterday after a week of trying. Uh, I think it took Eva two or three hours to beat this, like, of just nonstop grinding it. Because he is. He's just going to activate Tomb Kingdom and summon a BLS and say go. And then next turn he's going to summon, like two other guys and hit you directly for 3k and then next turn swing at you directly for game and there's nothing you can do about it except stare at your like summon skull in your hand and be like why am i playing this deck like your ancient rules summon dark magician pass Ooh. it's a 3000 attack tune bls you can't do anything <laughs> like your your deck of all the loner decks this is the worst one and of all the opponent decks the tune is like the second best one uh the other and in my opinion, hardest one was at the end. Uh, this one here, I only beat this because the game, like, let me. Like, I swear it had a mercy rule. Um, this is Yugi's deck, Silent Gadgets, uh, Quiet Strength, they're calling it. And the Pharaoh gets everything except the god cards to just come at you with, like, everything. And the only reason they didn't put the god cards in this deck is so it could break. <laughs> like... It could it's, accidentally break. <laughs> the the number of times he would just go, like, set two to three back row pass, and the only thing my deck can even do is, like, summon gadget, attack, go. And then he would, like, flip up this and summon two Dark Magicians. And even if I got, like, a Silent Magician level four and level up to make level eight, who's unaffected by, like, spells and all this good stuff, he's still just going to make this and summon another Dark Magician and activate another spell like, this thing or this thing, and, like, Regeki Dustry Me, and then this thing banishes the Silent Magician off the board, and he swings at you for, like, ten grand, and you just die. Like, he, he does just OTK you in his first battle phase every game. Uh, it's relentless, it's ruthless, and on Trial 7, uh, I summoned a gadget and attacked, and he just passed without flipping up his back row. And then he just drew past, and drew past, and drew past, and, like... I drew the duster and dusted his back row, and it included a magician's navigation that he just didn't flip. And then the cards he was discarding for turn included monsters he could have set to block attacks with. And I literally just like kept summoning gadgets and attacking him until he died, and it still took me like four turns. But he never played a single card for four straight turns. He just let me win. That's why I said it felt like there was some kind of mercy rule after I lost so many times. Yeah, I get you. See, it does sound. It sounds like fun. Uh... Sounds very time consuming though. I like, I do, there is always that challenge of right, making something that's actually really, like I do like these extra filled parts and stuff that they've done, they're yeah. cool. You get um, this and there's the Bakura one. Uh, I the Destiny board, yeah. Yeah, you, oh no, it's still the Toon one. It's, oh, they, they desperately, all look the same, so. They need to give us a, like a, um, a field for the Destiny board and essentially a uh, Dark Necro field pet at okay. some point. Yeah, you like, gotta... there's so much that you can do, like, uh, in terms of cosmetics, uh, I can see from a product standpoint, like, uh, the Egyptian Gods, that's three different game boards. Mm. Like, this right is, there. This is actually the easiest one, the the Bakura one. Uh, you have to beat this deck with the Loner deck, and I don't know what he does other than try and play Destiny board pieces. And, like, oh. the Loner deck they gave you has like, a duster, and you just win the game. Like, it's just, okay, cool, I win. <laughs> so deep plus, deep plus message there. The Pharaoh cannot leave until he loses. We just got tired. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, you, you can have this one. <laughs> I, I'm old, I'm going home. 
Uh, so, it seems like you had a lot of fun with that, though. Yeah, that, that ate a lot of my time. Uh, like I said, I was only doing my, like, two wins a day with the Exodia deck, so I'm still down at, like, gold five. But uh, it's it has just been, like, log in, and then that solo mode took me, like, hours across multiple days. Like, all my time was consumed by that. And then another one came out. I finally found time yesterday or the day before to log in and play. And the weather master, uh, the weather solo mode was out, and that took like the hour and a half that I had found. So, what's actually really interesting is Riot Games, in one of their posts for Legends of Room Terror, recently revealed that the most played mode and number of users acquired uh, are playing the PVE. So, I do wonder if Konami's done some of their research into that and realized that these um, gates are incredibly popular. They probably look at their own data as well, seeing lots of users going through playing that instead of just a standard ladder, which is something that kind of uh, a lot of people can get a little bit burnt out on, especially if you're not releasing new cards into the into the game, and the solo modes are more interesting. Absolutely. So, when I would say... Uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, that's where the focus of the content has been, uh, I think. It's going into solo mode as opposed to adding new cards, uh, creating new cosmetics and stuff like that. Oh, it looks like you've just been disconnected from the server. That's nice. <laughs> when uh, when I had my brief play brief playtime with uh, Hearthstone, um, the like Black Rock Mountain solo mode and stuff was way more fun than PvP, especially when, like, I could hop into a duel right now and odds are as good as not that someone's just going to use like DD Dynamite OTK, and I'm just yeah. not going to play the game. The the PVE I, decks never do that; they actually let you play an engaging experience. Yeah, I got FTK by the DD Dynamite deck. Uh, put a turn one set DD Dynamite, uh, the card that banishes their extra deck and trap trick and they just shot me for nine fires and then my draw phase and i was like oh okay yeah and like the alternative is that i just ignister them back like and that's the same duel over and over again the the loner the pve forced me to use loner decks and learn new decks and stuff that was a lot of fun uh i it was really cool to actually play like yugi's silent gatch deck against like the pharaoh like that was really hype um really hard uh, it would have been nice if i had uh a few more like good cards or if he didn't have things like dark magic circle that would have been cool but um oh dark magic circle that card's uh <laughs> caused me a few problems uh in the uh in some of the other stuff i've been doing obviously i didn't ex didn't play it through on this time up my ladder i for the guys uh watching i have actually hit plat one with a new deck which we'll go through today we'll do a feature for that at the end and we'll show you some duels but yeah, Dark Magic Circles, uh, I started an auto count to run an experiment, and uh, uh, I played against a Dark Magician player, and I was just getting more and more frustrated uh, when things weren't interacting the way that I was like, well, that's not how that's supposed to work, right? Or have I misunderstood this card? Yeah, it's, uh, it turns out Dark Magic Circles is a pretty good card. Mm. Yeah, there's a... Uh... The thing with the Dark Magician deck is that, especially with like the new field spell, Searching Eternal Soul, it... It reminds me of Dark Worlds back in like the late 2000s, early 2010s, where it has all the power in the world, but it has to like ramp up to get to it. And once it does, you've lost. Like if if you, it's like a steamroller that takes like a long time to get moving, but once it does, there's nothing you're gonna do to stop it. Um, unfortunately, it just takes a little too long to get there for it to be like the best deck in the game, but. Between Eternal Soul and Dark Magic Circle and Magician Salvation and stuff, it is really, really strong. And if they open well enough, they can pseudo FTK you. Uh, it'll take like three or four turns to win, but you're not going to be able to do anything for those three to four turns. Yeah, I do really like the Dark Magician deck, and uh, you can definitely build a version of that to get to plat one with it. I don't think it's as challenging as some of the other archetypes if you want to try and climb with. But I. Yeah, I think Dark Magician stuff is great. Uh, since the Dark Illusion, a lot of the cards have been really awesome for that archetype. Uh, very, very consistent deck. And just as you said, like there's other decks that you could be playing that do a lot more and require less card combinations in order to be good. Like Attic Vistas, for example, which we've uh, almost replayed to death, where it's like, yeah, I drew one card and can I, like, one-shot you from here. Mm. I, I am watching this guy who opened uh, Electromite Astrograph just having a good time against his elf like opponent. <laughs> oh, he's playing the little Cyber Dragon Affinity package. That's cute. I like that. Yeah. Any Eldlick player getting crushed is great. <laughs> for, from my perspective. I, I played against um, 
one on my uh, my other account for part of my experiment, and I made one Ooh, misplay. That and was I, a dumb because... move. What did he do? He sent uh, he sent the trap and the monster to send the emptiness to the graveyard when emptiness would destroy itself. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was questionable. <laughs> I, I guess Pendulums go to the extra deck, but he could have sent the Appaloosa and still taken out like two cards. Yeah. Oh, I just saw the chat. Uh, the uh, Katie probably watched the climb and uh, heard that we don't like the weather, so they're like, oh yeah, let's mess with him. Quite a few <laughs> of my former colleagues are friends with me on uh, Facebook, and I do post on there whenever we're going live, so they, they may have seen one or two of these. Uh, I don't <laughs> imagine they watch all two hours and go, oh, let's mess with Dan, like specifically. So but I, I know from data mining before Master Duel even went live that the weather solo gate was already planned. So uh -huh. uh, I, I do think that VFD will get banned in the future. In fact, I'm 100% sure of it. Um, oh, yeah, that card just needs to die in a it, It's already banned in both the OCG and TCG. There's no way the very first Master Duel list update does not ban VFD. Like, the, the, there's just no way. They all agree universally worldwide the card has to go, especially in a best of one format. Like, what we have on Master Duel is a snapshot of the OCG Forbidden list from like a year ago with one extra change, which is like set rotation being banned. And I can only think of like 10 different reasons why they would have done that. But uh, we, we've seen things happen in the OCG, like what their next list was. And it did, that's the one that uh, banned VFD and stuff. Like, if anything, they're just going to emulate the OCG lists and we'll have like a six month peek at what they're going to do. Uh, they will probably have more best of one specific hits. I wouldn't be surprised if they like hit Numeron Network, for example. But... Yeah, Numeron Network is a. It's difficult because, like, in a best of three, that, that deck just seems like it falls apart. But in best of one, there are some times where it just goes. Oh yeah, Numeron Network can kill you just because you didn't open well, the... Um, yeah, and a big thing is that most Numeron Network players, not all, but most of the ones I encounter, like if you don't play a monster in pass, they don't have like a go first plan. And the thing is, in real life, like you can make Mega Clops. And some of them are. I'm not saying that all uh, Numeron Network players are not doing this, but a lot of them are um, not... Oh, here comes the Infinity. Are not playing the... Mega Clops, and like this Eldlick deck would have nothing. That's it, you just lose to the Mega Clops. A lot of decks just scoop to Mega Clops on the spot, and if that does become like the popular trend, especially in a best of one format, you're gonna be forced to start running things like Kaijus. Uh, you already almost are, but best of one, everyone's on like Chaos Max Dragon for that reason. If you don't have like main decked outs to these stupid cards, uh, we don't have side decks, so a lot of these cards that exist and aren't good because game two and three beat them are significantly more viable, and hey Mega Man, thank you, are significantly more viable in a best of one format. Burn is a good example of that. The number of Death Koala I'm going to see in my life is zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's just never going to happen. Yeah, here comes the yeah. Community. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like, I, I personally prefer best of one format, but there, I do feel like they need to be a little bit more aggressive with the FNL list, with the data that they're going to be getting about some of these cards. Where it's like, it's not good deck building to build around the fact that these cards exist. You end up making your deck overall not work more often than you win the games where those cards get summoned. Okay, yeah, no, there it is. A satisfying uh, old player getting annihilated. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Pendulum player had the inevitability from the moment Astrograph was added to his hand. It's just inevitability can take a while. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Should we jump into some of the replays for today? Absolutely. I was just trying to get my five gems while we were talking. I ah, did not yeah, know that sense. it was going to be a 12-turn duel. The last we're one I watched min... was an FTK, so... We're min-maxing our time <laughs> here, guys, getting the five the five gems. Uh, all right. Um... Just because it's the fastest and easiest and the people have been waiting, we'll watch one of my replays. Uh, I've only got the two here. They are Exodia. They're two different kinds of uh, Exodia wins. Uh, one that I thought was funny and one that was like... There was comments on the YouTube video that I wanted to address. So I will do the funny, silly one first. <laughs> Just get it out of the way. Yeah, and for you guys that are watching at home, uh, I did put together an Attic Nister feature for anybody who just wanted to go through and just see the core parts of the Attic Nister. I'm putting that together for the Exodia deck, which will be going live 
around Wednesday, so you'll be able to see uh, dance, some of Dan's duels and an explanation of the deck and that in one easy spot, so you don't have to go through the whole live stream to, to find that information. So, if Summoner Monk successfully summons and the game doesn't stutter, <laughs> like, okay, he didn't have Ash, he didn't have Valor, and he didn't have Max C, so he's not going to get to them later. Hmm. Your yeah. win rate in this situation is obnoxiously high, like uncomfortably high, but only if you like do it correctly. Um, this is just one where I'm abusing the fact that <laughs> there's there's cards that we've banned in the TCG that are not banned on Master Duel that really need to be, but uh, all you have to do is get all the vanillas like out of your deck is, is I'm, I'm just trying to like go over this because there was people in the comments who were like how do you like play this deck properly uh drawing your normal monsters is bad uh so the goal is to play as many spells as you can and have treasure pan to pull all of the normal monsters out of your deck drawing effect monsters is not great either to be fair you want to draw spells so you have more summons but uh i have another panda in hand so sarayuja here can just summon that sarayuja whatever um and that's just like a free summon so down he comes and i can get rid of all those extra monsters and i've got there that's five pieces of exodia two limbs two arms two legs and this gets back the head so from here it's about getting all five pieces in the graveyard and i've already got an arm and a leg uh i've only got one spell so panda's gonna have to get i'm pretty sure knowing myself i would get the other leg here because i usually work from the bottom to the top and look at that i'm wrong but dark factory gives me a second spell to add the two pieces and then Panda can banish it to get the other leg. But you still have to get to the head of Exodia. And my number one way to do that is usually shooting Riser Dragon, but there's not like a super easy Riser from here. There is, however, Union Carrier. <laughs> Union, Union Carrier power. is just Lava Vol Chain in disguise. Um, I've been saying that since the card came out. All you have to do is make a link to, and like I equipped the head to the arm from the deck, and then <laughs> link it off, and now it's in the graveyard. It, it is just Lava Vol Chain. Um, people were using it to equip Dragon Buster and all this other like degenerate stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, it is just Foolish Burial on a Link to body. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good card. Union Carrier. A lot of decks. Uh, the thing I hate seeing it do the most is uh, equipping the Eva in the Drytron deck. That's another deck I despise. <laughs> so there's there's a better thing you can do in Drytron, which is equipping Dawn Knight, because uh, Union Carrier does say you don't get the effects of the guys you equip that turn. Hmm. So like if you were to pull Snow from the deck, uh, Eva, etc., when it goes to the graveyard, it wouldn't activate. You'd have to hold it there for a turn. But if you equip the Dawn Knight, and the Dawn Knight goes to the graveyard, he activates to send a light from your deck to the graveyard, and that can send the Eva or the Snow, and they can be used immediately. Right, I see, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> actually in my Drydron deck. <laughs> that exact uh, combination is da -da 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 -da, Drydron, out of deck. So for those of you at home, this card... This is this is what you equip to Union Carrier right here. I really like Dawn Knight. Dawn Knight's a card that kind of got overlooked um, because it's just at the time it's like oh, it kind of goes on life forms, but there's better things you could be doing. But the card is flexible enough that it's always one you should consider when you're messing around with light cards. Hmm. And like I, I only need like one Diviner in a build like this. I don't even play the Herald because this card's just better. <laughs> like there's there's so much nonsense you can do with Drydron because uh, unlike the TCG. Uh, we we do have Union Carrier. We don't need um, we don't need a lot of the nonsense like Beatrice and stuff because like a Union Carrier is still legal. Ben Ten is still at three. Like, I'll be <laughs> honest, I don't agree with not having the Herald in there. The Herald is just so powerful. Even uh, even with that, what's his fame? This thing Ruler. is just significantly better than Herald. Uh, except it gets negated by Forbidden Chalice, uh, Infinite Impermanence, which your Herald doesn't. This is true. Like I, I, I don't get me wrong. I think Advantage Rule is a good card, but like I, not, I'm not, don't entirely agree with your decision to cut. So the, uh, it's, I'm not just oh. passing on just Vanity's Ruler. It's also Eva and Orange. So it's two more. It's two negates and a yeah. Vanity's Ruler. And honestly, no one's playing through two negates anyway. But 
they would have to have something like in Perm specifically, and then also play through to Negates, and if they can do that, they were going to probably beat the Herald anyway. Yeah, good. Well, the thing is actually, <coughs> you don't get kaiju I guess. That's true. Uh, but let's get to your first replay. Okay, so the one at the very bottom, there is a loss on there. We'll come to that one at the end because it's funny and I wanted to share with you guys uh, another tilting experience on the ladder that I faced uh, climbing. Oh, the suspense is building for this. Yeah, with their the servers are little... super good today. <laughs> uh, disconnected me earlier in the stream. <laughs> Yeah, we're off to a great start, aren't we? You, got, you guys get one Exodia game, and then you're going to have to wait 20 minutes for us to load into a replace. <laughs> and there it is, a crash, of course. No, no, we got it. Uh, so, yeah, if we come down, uh, yeah, this is uh, against, I believe his name is actually Wednesday Rabbit. Wednesday or Rabbit? San Can we guess Usagi. that's new deck? Sure, go ahead, take a guess. Uh, I think they may have too seen late. it now. <laughs> too late. <laughs> We're playing Utopia. If you want to give it a quick pause, uh, this is a deck that I saw uh, was my, one of my crown jewel replays last week when I had to play for Utopia Field. I was really excited by it and decided I really wanted to take uh, that concept and march it all the way from the bottom of Gold 5 up to uh, Plat 1. And it only took me a week. It took quite a bit of tinkering with the deck to get used to it, because originally I copied a build from a website. I do want to shout out to these guys because it was like my starting blocks. Um, who's this? It was from Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Uh, and I'll just quote the author. Uh, Jonathan Martins, actually. For those of you in chat who want to see the initial build, I'll show you my improved build. Well, I say improved. I don't want to say disrespectful, but I'll show you the build that I used to actually climb with. Uh, a little bit later, but for you guys, you can catch that over there. If you're watching a, a recast of this, uh, just look at my list at the end. It'll be more interesting for you. <laughs> but uh, essentially, uh, this deck sets up one of the most oppressive fields in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! at the moment. It's basically Lyralus, but less consistent, but you get to play Utopia, which is more fun. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this. I had so much fun learning the combos. Uh, took a little bit of time. And you do have the problem with this deck that you're all in. Uh, yeah, the Dragon R Turbo. You go all in, and if it doesn't work out, you basically just uh, lose the game. It's so hard because you've put all your resources in. Uh, but then breaking the, the Utopia field, which you can make very consistently, is very, very difficult. So if you want to run the replay... <laughs> Sounds... I, I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, so you lose if they break your field. That's the exact type of thing where you want to shotgun Max C in their draw phase, because if they don't break the field, they lose, and if they do, Max C gave you a brand new hand. Uh, and as I look, the first card in your hand is Max C, so... Yeah, I actually don't shotgun the uh, Max C from this position, because I've got two infinite permanents, and they're... Oh yeah, they're I meant first, if you go so... first, when you have your whole board oh, yeah, yeah. Max C, like... You oh yeah, yeah, then you immediately try the Max C, and it's like... They can't just pass because you've got well over lethal by the time you do this. So I hate witchcrafters. Uh, that card pulls. Uh, is oh you missed it. Um, the witchcraft golem Araru. Yeah, yeah. I want you to pull so we can take a take a quick look at it. This is one of the most obnoxious cards in the entire deck. So when you target one of the witchcrafters or it, you attack one, they can summon it from their hand, and then they bounce the target. Uh, they bounce your card or one of their cards back to. It's own hand, and the problem is because that effect activates in the hand. This Utopia deck can't negate it because it's got great ways of negating cards activate on the field. So this is just a really obnoxious card to play in, uh, play into. So yeah, if you want to carry on rolling the rolling the game, uh, yeah, opponent's going to do some stuff. Summon the uh, witchcraft. I forget her name. Uh, she negates all of your opponent's cards at quick spell, uh, quick speed. Spell speed 2, and also can then reveal a bunch of cards from hand to pump the stats of a witchcrafter monster. So this is a, another difficult card to play through. Uh, as a quick effect, you can get into situations where you can lock your opponent out of the game, where every turn they're, when they would be able to get rid of this, you just go, yeah, I'll just respond and negate your whole field. So this is actually a bit of a challenge. But the good thing is we opened double infinite impermanence, uh, which is great against uh, this card. Honestly, in hindsight, had they just called them, like, slow effects, fast effects, and counter effects instead of spell speed 1, 2, and 3. Think of all the headaches we could have avoided in the last 20 years. 
<sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I could take responsibility since I for, did work there for 10 years, but I'm not going to. I mean, so, you started in 2012. That was already on your plate for a decade before you got there. But... 2011. 2011, <laughs> being exact. Yeah, you know, that's uh, fair. I, I always think in my head, uh, wind-ups and exactors, and that's January 2012 for me, but you guys yeah, order. make the cards before they come out. Imagine that. So, yeah, order you've, of got, chaos for so. you've got the for cool so. pot of greedy card. Yeah, XE change tactics, I'll go over a little, you see it in this duel, but uh, there's a great reason why it's in the deck. But it's also kind of a liability, so it's one of the cards that I'm always iffy about, but I do really like it. So do you duster this, or do you just go for it? Uh, so you start off with the impermanence and you duster. You always duster that back row because I'm going all in this turn. Okay, so this uh, is like Ignister, you're gonna just go all in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only exception is like, if you get max seed, then I would uh, make a Babuska and probably then make go up to, um, oh, what's his name? Zeus, Divine Arsenal Zeus. Okay. Yeah, so, so the XE Chain Tactics is really good because you can chain block your Utopia cards, uh, your searches and stuff from, for example, the ZW uh, Warrior, Ascended Sage, sorry, ZS Ascended Sage. Uh, you can protect these card effects from Ash Blossom because you just pay the 500 life points and chain link two, you draw the card. Your opponent's Ash Blossom will then negate you from drawing a card and they've traded an Ash Blossom for 500 of your life points. Not so great. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, perfectly honest with you. I don't know what a lot of these cards do. I spend most of my time waiting for my opponent to end their turn and then running them over. So... Okay, so you've got a basic trio, the onomatopoeia thing. You've got uh, Dodo Do, uh, you've got the uh, Zubaba, and then the onomatopoeia, who pretends to be a Gagaga, so you don't have to play any Gagagas. And they're kind of a basic trio, and you work them together, and they can make you the uh, Utopia Draco, Fu uh, Draco Future. And then they also give you the materials required to make number 99, uh, Utopic. Okay, so the relevant the, thing on this guy is that he comes back. Yeah, you get him back from the graveyard. You can special summon from hand, and there's some particular hands that you start with that uh, that's kind of relevant, but it's very, very vulnerable to um, getting effect bailout and getting your turn ended if you've done that. So and this then, opening hand is actually not... Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, this thing pays 500 to draw. I haven't seen this replay. I'm just trying to think, like, you've got a million things in this extra deck. Like, so, yeah. you're, you're just... Is, is this literally just make number 39 Utopia, or is there, like, a cooler, better card we make first? Uh, yeah, so if you play, essentially... Uh, in this case, we do actually just go for number 39 Utopia, because we've already got the Ascended... Normally, we go for... Utopic Sage, the, ex the rank 4, which then lets you special summon the Sage from the deck. The reason it's so important, uh, the ZS Ascended Sage, is it lets you search for the one copy of Rank Up Magic straight out of your deck if you use it as a Xe material for a uh, Utopia monster. So, And Sage is absolutely amazing because it lets you get the Sage from your deck, which gives you an extra material. It's not a number monster, so it counts towards your Draco future. And it also... Uh, you can banish it from the graveyard or the field to protect your monsters from your utopia monsters from being destroyed. Oh, which means then you blank an opponent's lightning storm and you don't have to negate it with your uh, Hope Harbinger Dragon, which is part of this combo. Yeah, the S in brackets. It, it is. It's Zephyr Providence. That's really cool. I like that. And, and this people is the search forget about and the draw. Yeah, so now opponent can't Ash Blossom our, our utopia search for our rank up magic for so safe. Uh, the problem with the uh, utopic uh, draw card. Sorry, I forget their names because I remember what they do, but it's I like change tactics. It's these chain tactics. Is that sometimes you draw your um, one of your double or nothing out of your deck, which then shuts off an entire ATK out of your deck for doing that? Oh. Target yeah, exactly. Nine. I've uh, never seen this card before in my life, and I see every single card that comes out, so I don't know how this one snuck by. Uh, target one, rank nine or lower Utopia exceeds you control, which you do. Special summon a rank 10 or higher one by using yep. that one as a material. If an Xyz monster is special summoned by the effect of a rank 10 or higher utopic, nice, uh, while this card is in your graveyard, uh, target one of those special summon monsters, attach this card to it as a material. Okay, that's- This card is disgustingly Yeah, good. that's not okay. Uh, so yeah, essentially we can- Utopia Ray, just... yep. Yeah, go Ray, so we get the extra material. We draw another card. I mean, I, I, even point. material or not, I would've just drawn the card, hey. Oh, wow, okay. I did not know this thing could search that spell. 
Auto yep. Play it. Automat card from your deck to your hand. I thought it was monster. No, you can also uh, use this as part of... Uh, you've got Astraltopia, which you can then send a card from your hand or your side of the field, so you send the automatic pick up. Is uh, Astraltopia the for... only card in the game you can't craft, but you can still get? Uh, I think... I think there's a few, and they're in the structure decks. Okay. Uh, but why yeah, you have, you, Utopia, you have to you have to buy the Utopia deck, and if you want free copies, and then I did buy free, and then I ended up cutting Utopia, uh, Astrotopia, Astrotopia down. So I kind of felt a little bit stupid for that, but you know it was all part of the experiments. Uh, oh. Mega Man X, yes, you can add us. I do put on all of the YouTube videos a link where you can submit your replays, and we can more than happy to cover them if they're cool on the stream. If Absolutely, they're terrible, yeah. We, just every them. stream we cover at least one guest replay as I as well. Um, I will show you both of our uh, friend codes as well. After this game, I'll show you them both. Just uh, once we get through this one, do it. Yeah, so if we come back to this, yeah, so we've now gone to Ray. Our Ray's got three XC materials, and then we're going to rank up and go to number 99, and we're going to have exactly four materials, which is very important because uh, it means that we can use our number 99 twice, and it's a quick effect, so it's even more disgusting than you would uh, imagine. And yeah, we'll draw another card. There's the Astrotopia, which is fantastic, because that then means we can extend uh, beyond this. This is, we get Leo. this is the annoying one, because he's like two negates. He equips this like Pegasus thing to himself, and they both have a negate on them. He's two negates and a shrink, which yeah. is quite relevant. Yeah, yeah, you get the, exactly. I didn't even need the Astro Utopia, because I got the uh, Numeron Protection. Yeah, this is the obnoxious part, because it can just go ahead and bounce Leo, and there's not a way for me to negate that. I didn't have enough extenders to get to futures and i was still kind of learning the deck at this point uh, so i learned a lot more that took so long he forgot you and permed his card <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh so at this point uh i've got access my opponent actually has a really good run at me uh this turn uh but we can go get hope harbinger dragon out of the deck oh that is so strong he is he's a utopic isn't he no he's a number monster and oh, he's a galaxy you... that's right okay the uh, number 99 gets you any number monster out. So now I can knock out spells. I probably shouldn't get that one, but I'm thinking Witchcrafter. It's not really threatening my field. Opponent tries to push two of my back row cards to my hand. I go ahead and negate the Witchcrafter Golem. Um, mostly out of frustration, because I couldn't remember if um, Imperm at the time would negate any additional copies he had. It was kind of kind of Ooh. pointless. I should have let the Imperm come back to my hand. It was a little bit of a frustration. Oh. Yeah, so opponent plays quite well into this uh, Cypher, and normally if this board gets broken... Whoa, uh, that's a big artwork. You generally lose. You should not say the Lunar Light word in this chat, Mega Man. <laughs> you're gonna trigger, trigger Dad. Nah, it's okay. Uh, I Listen, as much as I hate the deck, I'm still undefeated against it in ranked duels, so we're good. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so opponent cannot attack directly the turn that they use a their uh, Cypher Dragon to take your monster. So I'm protected from that. So now I've got to break my opponent's field, uh, and I've used most of my extra deck. But we're still oh, we're still pretty good here. What a bad draw. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there could have been better draws, but I've got everything I need to win the game from here. He's got no witchcraft or thing, so yeah, none of this matters. Uh, you've just I don't see the word quick. Uh, the key thing to note on the um, the rank nine is that when it dies, you can get, when it gets destroyed, you can get back a Galaxy Cypher Dragon. I should bring these up. People can pause the YouTube video to read them and stuff. Uh, yeah, so the, the first, this card uh, essentially does nothing at this point. It's just a 4,000 attack monster to get and over. this Five. guy floats. Yeah, and then that guy floats. So you still but, have this. Uh... Yeah, this does nothing at this point. <laughs> Although this... actually there is a cool thing with Onomat, which came up in one of my duels. I didn't save the replay exciting enough. So you can change the level of any monster that you control to match the level of one of your uh, Zubaba, Ga Ga Ga, Go Go Go, or Do Do Do. So my opponent gave me a Kaiju, and I turned the Kaiju to level 4 and then used it to make uh, <laughs> you took a double and then one shot the guy out of uh, out of the game. It, it hit him so hard he uninstalled Master Duel. Like, so, or so the legend goes. So uh, this is, this card is gonna like almost single-handedly win you the duel this turn then. Because yeah, I'm looking at stuff, I'm like, none of this is terribly impressive, but this must do something nuts that I don't know about. So yeah, you're two cards. So Ash Blossom. Yeah, it screams, get Ash Blossom, because it's a two for one. 
which is why you kind of get forced into playing called by the Grave and uh, one cross site designator in this deck, but I'll go over the full list a little bit later. Uh, so yeah, now I can essentially play my entire hand. This thing can be is treated as everybody. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you don't have to play any Gaga guys. I know um, this card. This card is sick. This card is very, very, very good. Uh, it also lets you special summon uh, basically one of each from your hand uh, in defense position. Once per turn. <laughs> and you've got like. <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh, like when we talked about the Agnistas, the basic trio, uh, red, yellow, purple, uh, Achichi, Pikiri, and Doyon. Yeah. I think I'm saying that's right. Uh, this deck's basic trio is the Zubaba, the uh, Dododo, and the uh, Onomat. Wow. And yeah, from, from here I'm able to just get my cards back, and I haven't even got the Dododo back from the graveyard, so now I can go up to uh, Utopic Dragon, I've got access to the Sage. The Sage is less relevant at this point, so I've already played my rank of magic. Interesting that you put it in the extra monster zone. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a force of habit. I don't really need to. Uh, but I'm not playing any Link monsters, so... <laughs> it's that a never force of habit. That's funny. Uh, and yeah, you're, you, get, you don't play any Link monsters, so it's just an extra zone for you. But... You get locked into Xe summons playing any of these cards. They say you can only Xe summon. That's fair. Play any Link monsters. Virtual world problem. Yeah, so we can get our Gagaga, -ga -ga, which then gets us number 39 Utopia back out of Graveyard. The Gagaga -ga -ga card is extremely strong. I massively underrated it in my earlier lists because it gives you an effect on your Utopic future where you can detach two materials from it to change the base attack of a Utopia monster to 4,000. Now, the reason this is important is because you can detach the Utopic Sage that gets stuck under the Utopic um, futures until they activate a monster effect so that you can then use it against their opening lightning storm. Yeah, so now we're going to be looking for a uh, nice utopic double, which is then going to allow us to get ourselves another high-powered uh, utopia monster out of our deck. Uh, we get the double or nothing to our hand. We're not going to be able to use it because our utopia's no XE materials, but if the times where you go second, there's a lot of times where you can snipe your opponent with a double or nothing uh, OK. Nice. Yeah, the I, that's the every time I play against this deck, this is just the card I negate. I just like yeah, save yeah. I save everything for turn this guy off, and then their backup plan has always been the pink guy. Um, the pink guy, who you apparently just don't have anymore. I saw you summon it. You oh, it's because uh, Golem bounced it, so he's in your extra deck. Um, yeah, where is he? Oh, maybe I don't play the pink guy. You, I don't know which pink guy you're talking you, you about. You literally I, summoned it this game, and I can't find it. That's really the, funny. It, oh, was oh, it right here. It's the pink guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that guy. Leo. Well, Leo's like the main thing. Yeah, ultimate. Uh, incredibly strong card. Yeah. Like, every single t game, they would like go second. They would make Utopic double to try and kill me with this. And I would negate that, and then their backup plan was the pink guy. And then I would have to yeah. worry about the pink guy and the Pegasus. He literally, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a pink utopia that rides a horse, like... So, uh, my Pegasus is currently in the graveyard because my opponent uh, banks my utopia, so I can't get that. So, uh, I changed the deck originally from the list I got from the Yu-Gi-Oh! deck prep to put that in the extra deck, specifically for the hands where I drew the um, the Pegasus, or it ended up in the graveyard, I needed a backup. So, so I put that in the extra deck, so I horse. can't ever accidentally draw it. It can't ever... <laughs> my utopia... My Utopia Ray is always going to be live because I've got this in my extra deck. It's like, it just gives your guy plus 3,000 attack, which is great. Uh, you, you can't special summon it because it wasn't uh, XE summoned at all, so it's, its other effect is irrelevant. It just gives 3,000 attack, and it's basically what you get if the um, Unicorn is no longer available. Even though it's no longer true. Pegasus. Not Unicorn. Pegasus, <laughs> yeah. Even though it's no longer true, this card did eventually come out. This is the card I always have in my head. It's like that card Europe never got. <laughs> so it's really funny to see you of all people playing it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this uh, Utopia the Lightning is very, very good, especially in situations like this. Uh, I could have drew technically, a second Ash Blossom. <laughs> in this situation, I could have just uh, kept the Utopia Futures and took control of my opponent's monster. But now I can have the attack of my opponent's monster. Uh, Lightning can run over that, it doesn't trigger and get the monster back, and then I can attack with, um... This oh. does leave my opponent on 100 life points, but my opponent's now playing through a max C, uh, two negations, and a, uh, 
numbers protection. So yeah, our opponent is dead. Yeah, there, there's not a whole lot they're about to do. So they could put that in defense mode, and then I wouldn't be able to attack because it can't be destroyed by an extra deck monster, but then I'd negate it. So I just purposely force my opponent into a position where they're like, they try and force it through. Uh, we just go ahead and negate that with Ash Blossom so I can hold up my negate on my Ray. Opponent is now jammed into attack position. Uh, and yeah, I can just now run over that. And if they had anything else, I can rumble. I can... Yeah, you attack with lightning in case of like the really random Exactly. Yeah, yeah in, case, in case he has that stupid golem again, we attack with the lightning and then we can just get, we've got game. Well, that's and awesome. Yeah, so the Tokyo deck, if you want to bring up my deck list quickly, I'll go over it in detail, uh, but like just so you sure. get an idea of the cards that are in uh, it, so when we go through these replays. Just for Mega Man, um, this is Matt's ID here. Yeah. And so then... sorry, Shana, I'm just going to turn my light on. It's getting really dark here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you did just lose an hour. Oh, no, you didn't. Everyone else did. All right, we're good. And then... My ID is this one here. Uh, yeah, um, Yuma, oddly, I thought Yuma was going to be my least favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist series <laughs> when I originally saw um, the stuff. And you got to bear in mind, like, I like got to see a bunch of stuff early, like concept art and stuff like that. Uh, but I actually disliked, what's his name, from Arc 5. Is it Yuya? Uh, I I think so. I, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, Yuya. Like, there, there's like I, 12 of them because there's like all the different dimensions. So it's hard to remember which one's the pendulum dimension one. Yeah. Cheers, my man. We appreciate it. Uh, so there's a quick overview of the deck. Uh, I will go and do a full breakdown of this, and when we do, we'll, I'll make it YouTube friendly so I can just cut it out uh, for the deck feature. But our hand trap lineup is three maxis, three ash blossoms, and then the rest of the deck is refined very specifically to make that opening field of uh, number 99, Hope Harbinger, uh, Ray as frequently as possible. You don't really have any room for, ch for cute stuff. Uh, the, as cute as it gets in this deck is I'm playing the Zexor search spell, which originally I thought was awful. Uh, Zexor construction, so I couldn't afford another card that was a two for one on the Ash Blossom, but this lets you put your double or nothing back in the deck, and it can get you a ZS monster, which you can then combo off entirely. Or you can also get your rank up magic off of it as well. It's not a two for one into Ash. If they Ash it, you don't shuffle the card back. Um, no, but I mean, just like in, in general, I don't like cards where I trade two cards into one situation, but like, because uh, yeah, that's fair. So like, sign up you, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Like, if getting Ash blossomed on your on a on a matter para is just so brutal, uh, and it's, you can get extra tilted in this deck if you draw hard draw the um, double or nothing because it takes away your Utopia one shots. Uh, I also play cross side Designator to by the Grave and the main ones, which is going to be Maxi Ash Blossom because I hate Ash Blossom in this deck. And Nibiru, because Nibiru is another problem, because you can't get to your negate without making five summons. And as soon as you go for futures, they're gonna Nibiru you. So we play the one cross-eyed designator to get that. If you find if I find room, I'd probably up the cross-eyed designators. Uh, because you can also play against opponents called by the graves. Yeah. Uh, and opponents uh, infinite impermanences. So if I was gonna take an extra slot in this deck and change it, I'll put the designator, but I'll go all over I'll go over all that a lot of detail a little bit later. Should we jump back into the uh, the replays? Uh, sure. I just wanted to very quickly, while we're looking at the deck profile, make sure that like I've looked at every single card at least once, especially since they're dark, because I'm unfortunately not made out of gems, <laughs> so I don't own a lot of these cards. But like, ah, uh, okay, this sure, card sure. hasn't been shown or talked about. Um, this oh, guy we'll here, over this guy was completely not seen. Yeah, well, I'll go over all these. They come up in the replays and of course in the de big deck feature. But yeah, okay. I just want to take a quick. For people who just want to take a quick look, so they're not going. So I'm not like going, oh yeah, and then I've got this, and it's like, I'm very excited about this deck. So uh, the, the, the I, I, I don't know all the cards, right? but I appreciate not everybody watching. Does. I was like, why do I have an, another mission? Because <laughs> uh, daily reset rolled over. I thought daily reset was an hour and a half ago. It was 22 minutes ago. Daylight saving time getting me again. 
Yeah, uh, the North American side, you guys gone already. Ours doesn't change for like another week. Saitama so I actually with the trophy. Saitama, yes. Uh, the original One Punch Man himself, or a city pan? We, we don't know, but Saitama's deck, if I remember, was uh, Tribigate Zodiac. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I tried to avoid oh. replays. Yeah. God, this hand. <laughs> well, I, I guess you get can pitch the extra ash. Oh, this hand is great. Like, this has full combo. And it also has ash bait as well. With Sorry, the, uh, I, I, I saw two ash and change tactics, and I was like, wow. But no, I forgot that para trades the extra ash for two broken cards. Yeah. So opponent, I think, makes a huge mistake. Uh... No, 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 that's not this game, that's another game. But yeah, so, if you pause this, yeah, no, they go for the Ash Blossom, they go for the Maxi, they see me discard an Ash Blossom, so they assume I don't have them. So yeah, I actually played this through, this is the game. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Ash. No, no, it's a different game where there's a misplay, but yeah, I've got the Ash. Um, they, they figured that the Maxi was going to be safe. Um, I do have a backup play, uh, in case the Maxi does resolve, which is I just make Babuska in defense mode pass the turn, and then from there you can then uh, switch it to attack mode because it can't be targeted or destroyed. Attack over their guy, and then you can get um, Zeus and sweep their fill. So this is the version of the combo you talked about before where you don't open this, so you go Sage first. And then yeah, the so, Gagaga, yeah, and then that lets so you make actually, zero. So actually, I should have made Prime Math Mech, and then I could have got myself uh, the Astral Utopia, so that was actually I've denied myself enough doing it this way. Ah uh, yeah, so I've actually, in this case, I've used the Sage, made sure the Sage... So I've got access to it in case my opponent opens Lightning Storm. Uh, I've got Draco Futures down now, so I'm protected for the rest of the turn. It's only got one material, so the difficulty is if my opponent uses an effect here, uh, I don't have a negate in my follow-up turn. Uh, so I could have played this a little bit cleaner, but again, these are the earlier replays while still getting used to... Uh, still getting used to the deck. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I was thinking that when you mentioned the Aftertopia thing. I'm like, yeah, but this is like your third game with the deck. <laughs> so. Yeah, like, it took me a while to, to learn this in and out. Because uh, I was I tried watching some videos and stuff like that. But it's always just like a flurry of cards. Uh, which is actually kind of what inspired to do the deck feature combo breakdown for the Agnisto stuff. So it was like, I'm going to hold your hand from start to finish and tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 honestly, I, I watched these... through those. I really liked them. They were really, really detailed. Yeah, I'm going to do another one for this deck so you guys can then go and this uh, onto ladder. Because I do think this is uh, tier 1 uh, competitive. And yeah, you can get our ray. Uh, we go ahead and attach. Exodia is the best deck for gold. The worst deck for platinum. Don't play Exodia in platinum. Gold is harder is than Commander platinum. Commander X. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, good. So right here, if you want to pause it, I can just explain this field. So... Oh, actually, just play it because I'm going to activate the uh, uh, Dragonair. Uh, get Hope Harbinger. Yeah, number 38. So this field's interaction is uh, the Utopia Ray is in the gate and has the attack of a monster. The Pegasus will negate the effects of a monster that activates on the field, so that's two negates. The Hope Harbinger will uh, negate a spell and attach it, so that's three negates. And then I've got the Draco Futures negate as well, so that's four. And if I'd have played this correctly and got the gone down the Prime Math Mech route, which I will show you in, a, in another replay, I would have also had Numbers Protection and Caught by the Grave. So the amount of interaction that I've got to stop my opponent playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is incredibly yeah, oppressive. Equal to the number of cards in their hand. <laughs> Basically, yeah, my opponent, like, I, I can negate everything. Uh, but, like, this deck is actually really hard to play if you don't know your opponent's combos as well as you need to. So I let the... Um, Tanky resolve so that then for the rest of the thing I'd have to worry about impermanence. Uh, and of course against the fractal I can just go ahead and call by the grave that. Uh, Sam, if you want to beat that field, uh, you can watch my tag Mr. Deck and show you exactly how I broke through it. <laughs> yeah. So my opponent, uh, their prime play here is to go up to uh Bobor and thank you then for they're gonna range. Oh yeah, thank you for any followers. Guys, if you're not following us, please go ahead and Hit that follow and subscribe button so you can see us when we go live. It really helps us get the content out. So opponent is trying to go for a direct attack, and then they can go Zeus, and then they think they can just go ahead and nuke my field with four materials. Uh, my one negate isn't going to be enough. But pro this is a really cool thing. 
Everyone always forgets Hope Harbinger has an attack which redirects an attack to itself, and Dragonair can make the attack of an attacking monster at zero. So opponent runs headfirst into my giant dragon, and I'm sitting there with uh, about 12,000 points of attack on the field. Yep. Nobody, yeah, you're right, Orange. Nobody ever reads Hope. <laughs> and yeah, honestly, uh, uh, I have the opposite problem with Hope. Uh, it's true that I don't read it. Um, I, 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 I don't. There's a lot of cards I just don't read. Oh wow, this is like the easiest thing of your life. Um, yeah. The uh, I always know that he has the attack negate. I always forget that he has the spell. The spell negate. How do you forget that? That's like the main reason you play it. I I don't know. It's like a weird mental block. Like it's it's not an attack negate. It's a redirect. And yeah. it also then pumps a guy that. It's, one, it, it's because, it's because uh, the spell negate isn't the uh, detaching of material effect. In my head, uh, okay. I, I associate Xyz monster effects with what they detach materials to do. It's like this mental shortcut I have. So, yeah. be, like, I've seen him with zero materials and been like, oh, he can't, like, use his effect. Activate spell. <laughs> like, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> oh, this card is just so good and... Um... Spell negation normally just comes on Imperial Odyssey. So yeah, just uh, go ahead and my opponent uh, can concede there. My field was unbreakable for an opponent's tri, tri Brigade deck. Like, they would need to have a Forbidden Droplet, and then they would need to discard a monster. They'd have to discard like two cards to to play, and then I'd still have a monster. I'd, no, three, they'd have to discard three cards, and I'd still have a monster negate if they did that. Mm. So it's very, very strong against that. Uh, so the next opponent is uh, Tomasu, uh, and they're playing Attic Nistos. So oh, <laughs> uh, and they, but they like to go first, so that immediately tells me that they're rival. And a rival five thousand attack is not exactly difficult for Utopia uh, to to beat. All right, pizza, and you just go and negate anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know uh, what the deck does. You know that that's the right play. Yeah, I know that this puts my opponent in the most awkward position, or it forces him to commit the uh, AI met you. When Infant came out, and I still got to play it like locals and stuff, this is a while back now, um, I cannot tell you how many people would hold the Imperm for the Infant and yeah, like and then... allow things like a Chi Chi and Picari and stuff to go through. Like, it was just free. Like, Agnister was so far ahead the best deck in the game for like two weeks until people learned how to play against it. Mmm, a oh, Tomasu. Oh, there you go. Thomas. Yeah, so opponent is going to go ahead and do their uh, Agnister nonsense to a rival. Which is where I want my opponent to be, to be honest, because I know I can beat that in battle. My Tokyo monsters can easily. Yeah, get over five he's, in attack. he is unwittingly playing right into your hand right now. Yeah, and this is, again, I think that my opponent, if they'd have gone second and would have gone oh, for their... The dark, yeah. I was like, OTK. what is he doing? But I forgot that uh, Dark Templar and Access Code could still search for Delion for a sec. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, opponent does a combo. They don't actually make the Quantum, uh, quantum Dragon to back it up as well. I mean, he elected to go first, which means he's got his own version of experience and education with the deck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I would have, if I was going to go for an arrival play, uh, backing up with a Quantum Dragon, a, a Gachiri Quantum Dragon, is, like, it would have meant that I wouldn't have been able, it would have been very difficult for me to win through that. It's, Actually, can I? It's literally why we play the Quantum Dragon. Yeah, this yeah. thing's the spider, yeah. I think this deck still beats it, to be honest. It's still possible, yeah. Finally goes up to Templar. Uh, to answer your question, Mega Man, uh, my favorite summoning mechanic is Exe. Um, I like how you have to use the materials as resources in order to activate the effects. Uh, so, and... he asked what our favorite extra deck monster from each mechanic is, not what our favorite oh, from... mechanic was. Ah, right, okay, my favorite. Oh, oh. well, I'll try to think about that, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. But yeah, opponent's going to go up to Arrival. I'm trying to remember what their synchro choice is. Wing, wing Pegasus. 
Yeah, Wind Pegasus is not the one you play when you blind first, but that's okay, because not everyone has to play every deck the same way. Yeah, it's also pretty strong, because while in the graveyard, it does give shifted opponent Trans and then use the top. Yeah, I, I don't agree with the way my opponent decided to make this arrival, but he's they just, got there. Yeah, he's going for it like extra hard, I guess. Like, he just, he wanted that extra thousand attack points real bad. Yeah, and I mean, getting up to 6,000 is actually quite huge, because it means that uh, most opponents' um, access code talkers can't beat it. But that's obviously exactly then... it. It's the, the difference between 4 and 5 is negligible when access code is 53, and that's why yeah. we don't do what he just did, and instead you get an extra synchro body. But... You, you drew the, the two stupid cards again, and you've already got Sage and Astrotopia. Like, uh, if you could yeah. pick your five-card hand. Uh, I'd have Sage in every opening hand, uh, if I could choose. Uh, I do like Onomatopoeia, because uh, it's obviously you can do full combo off of that, but uh, it's... Because there's so many cards that your opponent can respond to it with, which causes problems. Like, Sage turned out to be, like, one of the strongest openers in the deck because you just go Special Summon. And your opponent then goes, oh, Panic Maxi, or something. You get to see a lot of what your opponent's going to do just by Special Summoning that uh, Sage. Yeah. Yeah. Opponent goes uh, Dan Mori. Like, I don't agree with that. But, well, they, they keep me off the Onomat card, but again, it's uh, like what I showed you guys with the Agnista cards. It's... Playing cards that I already when I searches that present to my opponent. Oh, he's going to go for this combo when I've already got access to it. Yeah, Black Bell Sam, you could be right though. He could have just been like four thousand is popular to beat five thousand, then shuts that down. Uh, so now I can just go up uh, for a full combo. Yeah, not losing to Chaos Max is sensible, but you also don't lose to Chaos Max with anyway. But. Uh... Utopia yeah. Ray, another draw, another 500 life. When you had me yeah, build it's... the deck, I was like, why on earth is he playing Utopia Ray? And then as soon as you summoned Utopia the first time, I was like, okay, now you make Ray here. And like yeah, everything totally. made so much sense. He just popped the... Okay. Yeah, so... I found I could have Dan Mori the Onomatopoeia and Twin Twisted the... On, uh, the Searcher, the Onomat Searcher I used originally. But yeah, um... At this point, I'm not too fussed because I can get up to 5,500. Again, it's because I played Z-Dub Weapon Picture Deck. And if I'd have just gone for the um, Pegasus, I'd only be 3,300, but here I go up to 5,500. Yeah, you also have, uh, what's his face? Utopia the Lightning is like 5k in a can. Yeah, and it can crash into it. Yeah, opponent win Pegasus, shuts, shuts that away, we get direct attack. Uh, and then... The backup plan, which is the pink one. Sage. I know you like Sage. You just you don't want to chop like lightning storm. Oh Zeus. That's well, yeah, because now my opponent's completely shot out of the game. because uh, I know that I can get Hope Powerbringer here. I've got Max C and then I can Zeus <laughs> when my opponent starts to build a field and then Zeus will close the game out by itself. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. It's just, it was just a case of securing, it's like playing what could my opponent's possible attacks be? And it's like, I can Zeus, and uh, my opponent then has no way of winning the game. So, with, before we start another duel, we should probably, we had that guy ask us a question, so we should probably yeah, take time sure. to answer it. Uh, so I guess the first extra deck mechanic is fusion, so what's your favorite fusion monster? My favorite fusion monster? Um... I really like the Dark Magicians. I think they're that's a really cool, flavorful fusion monster. Um, oh, I thought you meant like the Dark Magician fusion monsters, not the fusion monster called the Dark Magicians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean the Dark, the Dark Magicians. I think it's one monsters. Uh, I'm trying to think of other ones I like. Oh, um, actually, the... Chimera Tech Over Overload Dragon. I think was um, yeah one of my absolute favorites of all time because I built like this most Maybe back way back one. when I built one of the most disgusting. Um, machine OTK decks, where I was OTKing with like pretty much any opening five cards in my hand. So this is back when Future Fusion used to dump your entire deck on turn one. Uh, Overlay Fusion, three copies of Brain Control, that kind of format. Upper Deck, that was the year, the, the Forbidden Limited list used to get updated October 1st and uh, some point in spring. Yeah, it was they moved, every six months. 
After the release of um, Power of the Duelist, that was the year that they moved it to September 1st. And then they immediately destroyed the deck that I traded like my entire collection into building. So I was really not happy about that. Obviously, I've done that to a lot of people, so I can now sort of understand it from both sides. <laughs> I mean, on, on one hand, Upper Deck was a lot more ruthless, though. I remember when Maximum Crisis came out in uh, May of 2017, and then like two months later in September, uh, we got a ban list, and you left Masterpiece and Diagram both at three because they were secret rares. That's at least well, my hypothesis on it. Like, the deck got gutted either way. It's still like True King's Return to one, Ignis Heat to yeah, one, Dynamite so, Knight yeah. to one. But for NDA reasons, I got to be very careful what I say when I talk about that yeah, stuff. Of course. Uh, so I can't mention that. So what I will talk about is sort of back when Upper Deck shifted, Chimera Tech oh, was uh, unfortunately no longer playable. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that is my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite fusion monster because nothing. It's just like, oh yeah, here's my eight fires and attack attacks five times dragon. <laughs> yeah, on that's turn one. That's really hype. That that's similar to like your modern Galaxy deck now. Uh, my favorite mm. fusion is also the same as my favorite card, Dark Paladin. Um, I, I just, I love everything about it. When I was a young kid, um, I was at my grandmother's house watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and drawing on the table, not on the Do you want to go ahead and hit a spectate game up while I'm talking about this? Uh, sure. So there's just some some stuff moving on the screen for you yeah, guys. Yeah, um, I, I was drawing on paper on the table, to be more clear, but... Uh, the I, I had noticed that Buster Blader had the same triangular, like, I don't know what you would call it, part of his body armor behind his head. So, like, he couldn't lean his head back. There's, like, a triangular-shaped thing in the way. And Dark Magician had the same one. So I was just drawing this, like, cool guy who had, like, a sword-staff combination with the same, like, triangle behind his head. And something that was, like, 95% the same as Dark Paladin. And uh, that that day also was the episode that Yugi summoned Dark Paladin for the first time in the anime as I was like drawing it and like that I'm screwed for life now like I'm never gonna get the nostalgia of that out of my system so oh good Mission. Um, so Dark Paladin's my favorite card in the game and therefore my favorite fusion his was Luna Light Leo Dancer which is the only Luna Light monster I've ever played uh, Leo Dancer and Wolf in Infernoids believe it or not um, okay I, I would use like Mega Zaborg or Void Imagination to just dump like a bunch of like Panther and Cat Dancers to the graveyard from the extra deck. And then Lunalite Wolf is a Pendulum monster with a Pendulum effect that does the same thing as Miracle Fusion. And just summon the Leo Dancer from my extra deck one or two times. And it was just like this 3500 3, double attacking card in a can, just using your extra deck like that. Uh, things you can do instead of Extravagance, by the way. <laughs> I had the same replay, but on the other side, that's funny. Um, so, uh, after Fusions, I guess, is Synchros. Uh, Synchros. Oh, that's tough. Like, Stardust Dragon was another Yu-Gi-Oh! monster that changed the way people built their decks. Uh, like Jinzo, uh, where it's like, you just can't play that many traps. It then meant you couldn't play that many destruction effects. But... In terms of synchro monsters, I really like. There's a couple. I really like TG Hyper Librarian because it's so degenerate. Uh, <laughs> I also really like uh, Hot Red Dragon Arch. Scarred Red Dragon Archfiend is a card I really like because um, just destroy the opponent's field. Uh, attacks really. Attacks great. It's a cool looking card. Um, what else is there that I've liked over the years for Synchros? Yeah, I think Scarred Red Dragon Archfiend is, because I just think it's an all-around good card. It's a generic, the last strong Ghost card. Rare. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Uh, for a long time. It, until like Ghosts from the Past and Legendary Duelists and stuff, yeah. Uh, my favorite Synchro is... Oh my gosh, I should know his name. Denglong. That's the level 5 Yang Zing one. <laughs> oh, he, that's, a, that's a good, that's a stupid card. <laughs> He's been in a lot of the decks that I've had the most fun with. Um, not just in Yang Zings, which is one of my pet decks. I'm in love with the Yang Zing deck as a whole. But, um, like, I, I also played him in the Zephyr deck. I played him in the Zodiac deck. Uh, using Zodiac Barrage on Bayan of the Yang Zing 
to get Chaiwen and Rapier from your deck. And then Synchro Summoning Denglong to search for like the trap and then also getting like a Dryden off your Rapiers is... That, that was a good time. I was ending on like Omega and uh, the trap negate and a Dryden and like having three negates back in January, at, like early 2001. So, or 2017 rather, 2001, oh my god. Before Link Monsters, like before it was cool to end on like five negate boards, I was ending on like three to four negate boards with Zodiac Yang Zings. Um, that was a really good time. I miss those days. But uh, yeah, Chai, uh, Chai Wen. Denglong who dumps Chaiwen is one of my favorite cards. And uh, something I never got to do until Master Duel, because he got banned here, was uh, dumping Chaiwen with him to turn him into level 1 and then making Link Kariba with him and getting his graveyard effect is super, super cool. Big, big fan of Danglong. Danglong, War Criminal, the Yang Thing. <laughs> uh, his favorite is Cosmic Blazar Dragon. Um... Color Blazar Dragon is probably my least favorite Synchro of all time because it made my life an unimaginable hell for a few days. Uh, for a few days, I like that. It's like, yeah, it was an inconvenience for a few days. Well, it, it had nothing to do with the actual card game itself. Uh, not to... The, you will not be able to comment on this. I'm just going to preface that. Uh, Matt will not be able to comment on anything I'm about to say, but there was a product called the 20th Anniversary Product in Japan and the big draw for it was the first ever printing of Cosmic Blazer Dragon, and they were keeping it a secret from the Japanese players. And the North American equivalent product, Duelist Saga, the product page on Yu-Gi-Oh! Card mentioned a secret ace monster that never came into existence in our dimension. So when we posted about the product page, we were like, holy crap, Cosmic Blazer Dragon is in this set. And the phone calls and the emails and the investigations and just the week that I had from making that post. Who told you this? Who leaked it? Like, just, it was a nightmare because Japan did not want anyone to know that Blazar was going to be in that set. And just, I, I was terrified that, like, I was going to get somebody in trouble, that, like, I was Facebook friends with Julia or Matt and they were going to get, like, talked to or anything. Like, it, it was really bad. It was really, really bad. Probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my site since the start of it was Cosmic Blazer Dragon. So I just, I do not like that card at all. Huh. <laughs> just, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Huh. Uh, obviously you can't comment on any of that. So, um, no, I'm not. also not in the business of um, getting sued for breach of contract at this stage. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Uh, next would be Xyz Monsters. What's your favorite Xyz Monster, and why is it Galaxy Eyes? Uh, it's actually not. It's Wind Up Zen, uh, Wind Up Carrier Zen Mike. Really? The banned one? Yeah. It's been your favorite Xyz Monster that whole time, and it was just banned your whole career? Uh, again, it's like NDA reasons. Uh, yeah, 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 that's fair. my favorite one, but... <laughs> um, essentially, the Wind Up combo was so ridiculous. It's not something that should have ever been legal in the game, uh, but it ended up being legal, and uh, again, I can't, that's the problem, it's like, what, I'll, I'll, I'll pick a different card that, back, because I can't really talk about the reasons why that card. Uh, XE Monsters, um, I do really like Prime, the Prime Photon Dragon, uh, for one-shotting people, uh, because it's just, it just feels fun to just be able to, like, make a monster with over 10,000 attack, and then just run it at your opponent's face, like, yeah. Uh, when I first started playing Master Duel, I'd not played Yu I'd not touched a Yu-Gi-Oh card um, since I'd left my previous job, and uh, it's it was just like so much fun playing Galaxy because that's what I used to play when I like because the cards were pretty simple and it was big and flashy. Uh, side note: They're on turn twenty-four. <laughs> like this is Time Lord versus Crawler. This is. I picked a good replay to accidentally put on while we talk about this. For, for this, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my favorite Xyz monster, that's, I, I honestly have never really put a whole lot of thought into it. Uh, throughout most of the Xyz era, I still played, like, synchro decks. So, like, Xyz monsters were more just toolboxy things, 101, my stroke, stuff like that. Uh, I never really played, like, a deck that just, like, Xyzed like crazy. And then even in my Pendulum deck that I played for, like, the subsequent six years, uh, 
I, the only Xyz monster I ever made was Absolute Dragon, and that was just because when I linked it off, it would give me a Vortex Dragon. I, uh, I I never really had like a, whoa, like I really love this Xyz, I wish it came an Ultimate Rare, it's like my favorite pet one. Uh, I played spell books for a long time and made Shining Elf, I guess, for a little while there. Like that That's really the only Xyz monster I remember making proactively in a duel. So I think I'm gonna have to just go with like Lava Ball Chain because that card was super degenerate. It let me do a lot of silly stuff, whether it was that Heracti Sophia Quasar FTK using 12 Lava Ball Chains or even putting a card on top of my deck with a Reversal Quiz using it, <laughs> or four Reversal Quiz using it. So oh, I'll, I'll go with Lava Ball Chain just because it's the closest thing I can think of. His is Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon, which is, I like that card, that card's funny. Yeah, that's cool. It was a really great card in the anime as well. I wish the entire Mark V series had been like Yuto and they just ignored Yuya. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't say I disagree. I didn't watch a lot of it, but just seeing the light leave the eyes of like the people who are like staff on my site, the numbers, like the passion they all had for Yu-Gi-Oh! was so great that we started the site that we have, and by the end of Arc 5, half of them stopped playing Yu-Gi-Oh! altogether. And uh, they, they came back for Master Duel, though. Like, Eva's actually been, like, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! again for the first time in, like, six years. Arc 5, like, really did a lot for people's passion for the game. It was just underwhelming, and Pendulums were so poor. Just everything about them. And speaking of which, we're on Pendulums, and his favorite is my least favorite card in the entire game, Lunalite Tiger. And no. Hmm. Uh, my favorite Pendulum monster is Astrograph Sorcerer, because it's the most degenerate Yu-Gi-Oh card I've ever played in my entire life. Uh, I personally dislike the entire pendulum mechanic. Uh, I think it was unfortunately not not great design. Like it, initially, like if I had to pick one that I really liked, I think Odai's Pendulum Dragon at the time was correct. It was a correct kind of pacing. Like you play this card as a great pendulum monster, it puts itself in the extra deck, it searches your deck for a card. I think that's an example of a Good pendulum card. Obviously, you gives advanced a lot since then, where your cards need to do something now. You can't really be waiting until the end of the turn to be doing stuff. Uh, but overall, pendulums just every pendulum deck ended up just being the same. Where the best way to play it was to put every pendulum deck that fills up your extra deck as quickly as possible. Then pendulum summons five every turn. I mean, and if, if it was legal, you could just put monkey board in every existing Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Yeah, and I, I just don't. I don't like the pendulum mechanic, and I'm. Glad that when they did the Master Rule 4 update, that uh, Pendulum Monsters were not one of the uh, summoning mechanics where they released a restriction on what you could do uh, without requiring Link Arrows to play them. Uh, as for the follow-up question there, Prismatic Set, VFD and Zeus or Appaloosa Access Code, I definitely prefer the Access Code one. Hmm. Although, now that he brings it up, if I had... My, my favorite Xyz monster might be Zeus. The card's pretty cool. <laughs> Zeus! His artwork is definitely one of my favorites. That card is beautiful. Yeah. Zeus is very strong. Uh, it's going <coughs> in... Babuska Zeus goes into a lot of my decks now just because if they max C, it's something you can just retreat onto and it's just so strong against everything. Like, Babuska floodgates them for the turn unless they have Forbidden Droplet or Infinite Impermanence. They have to get, have another card to play through it. You've only given them one or at most two cards off of a max C. Oh, they finally and, finished their duel. Uh, you can go up to Zeus and then Zeus wipes their entire field. It's so good. <laughs> so uh, just as we're finishing this live duel here, last is Lynx. His favorite was Isolde, Isolde, whatever, which I can understand. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Access Code Talker. Access Code Talker. Yeah. Access Code Talker. Access Code Talker. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Chad. <laughs> yep, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Chad. Mine is Electromite. No shame. I've I have summoned Electromite probably more than every Link monster in the game combined, including Access Code Talker, because I was summoning three Electromites a game for and years. one Access Code Talker, because that's all it takes to yeah. win. <laughs> Electromite and I have done some horrible, horrible things on multiple continents. So <laughs> <laughs> I look back in my life and I question if I made all the right choices. And every time Access up, I'm like I'm happy with where I am in life. So uh, let's uh, yeah. let's take a look at my other replay real quick, just because I'm here and I'm not in your profile anymore. 
Uh, this one I saved because of a YouTube comment where someone was like, what do you do if you draw, like... Wait, did team? you already cover this one uh, right at the start of the stream? Uh, no, I covered the, uh, the, the one I did at the start of the stream was, like, using Union, uh, carry. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. sorry. Go this, ahead, introduce us. Introduce yeah. us this this one was, what do I do if I draw too many uh, of the vanillas? Because, like, I don't have the panda, so I'm forced to use a lot of my draw spells early. The three chicken game. Uh, and I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, poor you. I drew three. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, like, I drew, like, water spirit. Like, oh, drawing your cool. normal monsters is really bad. And, like, that was, like, their question was, like, what do you do if, like, you have, like, too many of, like, your normal monsters... And like, at, at this point here, I'm stopped. I've got four cards that I'll just say, don't keep going. Now, mm -hmm. granted, I got four spells, which is awesome. Got no problem there, but even this chicken game is just kind of like stuck in place now. Oh, I see. So this is pull out all of the tuners. I have no tuners left. And then formula synchron and hopefully draw well. And it's another normal monster. So like, the the thing that uh, our commenter, who I, I'm not gonna like say their name or anything, what they missed is this play right here. Ah, uh, Link Spider. <laughs> and Link Spider lets you do that. Yeah, so I use your, and then fix the hand. So that's the like, I, I guess like win condition. <laughs> <laughs> just like, and now you get like the bad effect monsters out of your deck. So that all that's left in there is the good spells, and then that's gonna be your riser dragon, and that puts the head in the graveyard. Hope that you don't yeah. drop two vanillas off this pot of avarice. Still draw one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeesh. But it's okay, because you still pull that out, and then you get another blank, and like, yeah, this is the duel where like all I draw is like blank after blank after blank, and it no it it's fine, because you still have Magical Mallet as a reset. Yeah, exactly. Like, you you play three mallet, you play three reload, and it's just free body after free body after free body, and free card after free card after free card. The head's already in the graveyard, Architis is a nice few draws. Leg, arm, arm, leg. It's just trying to see another Dark Factory right now. And this is a couple of draws, and then Pop Rep will discard them, or hey, they're actually draws. And like, if this drew like a, yeah, that's a blank. If this drew another blank, it's Mallet, play it, put back the extra two that are not. Like, you just, every card left in the deck is something. So there you go. Dark Factory, get back two. Dark Factory, get back two. Eruption, get back one. It's just, it's a filtering process. You play your cards in the order to filter out the ones that you don't want to draw before playing your draw cards. And things like Link Spider do fix your hand. And then you have Union Carrier or Shooting Riser to get the head out of your deck. And then it's just about drawing into enough eruptions and dark factories to turn the screen into fire. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I, I like breakdancing Exodia. I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Black Pearl Sam, you're not wrong. Link Spider is a very hard from the Link starter deck. A very choice one. Yes. Uh, it, it's actually, <laughs> to rewind, like just before you left the company, the last deck that came out, Adam Emancipators, uh, I watched a guy open Dark Magician, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Angel Trumpeter, the level 4 normal tuner. Uh, Beta the Magnet Warrior, the level 4 normal non-tuner, and uh, Psy Frame Driver. His opening hand was five vanilla monsters, and he won the god darn duel. He, he just, he normal summoned Beta, he made the Link Spider, and specialed the Angel Trumpeter from his hand, and made Fibrax, and went off on like his whole combo, made Anaconda, fused the Dragoon using the two vanillas in his hand, and ended his board with like a full combo with a five normal monster hand because of how powerful Link Spider and Fibrax are. And it crashed again. <laughs> uh, yeah, Link Spider, very, very good card. Um, 
let's we haven't done our uh guest yeah one. i guess we I'll, I'll do the guest one first and then we can just burn through the rest of yours all in order uh so and this one is actually from one. black belt sam okay uh who's right there profil profil yeah thanks Thanks for all the support, Sam. Your phone is supposed to be on silent. We talked about this, and Uh, it's... I, I thought it was. That's my bad. Sorry. Curses! Curses! That one I got on YouTube is gonna be, like, popping off. Yes. Well, everyone on YouTube now knows I have a Samsung. I'm sorry. There you go. When you, when you get... When you get jumped in, uh... Wherever in the world that you're hiding. <laughs> they'll be like, Oh yeah, I saw your live stream. I know... I know you got this Samsung. Stop trying to hide it from me. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have an ultra, ultra athlete. athlete. Okay, I I watched a few of the replays that were submitted, and I quite liked this one. It's rather short, but it was very cathartic. This one goes out to all of those people out there who are sick of the Numeron OTK deck. Oh, if you really hate that deck and you want to mess with it, play Curse of the Forbidden Seal. Watch <laughs> them explode when you curse their uh, Curse Seal of the Forbidden method. Spell. Yeah. <laughs> So, right, they, they can't always just Numeron gate it into play and then you can't do anything, but like, uh, it's always fun. Anyway, so yeah. show me what's happening here. We've got Hyper Stadium. In. Yeah, Hyper Stadium pays a thousand to give you an extra normal summon, which is everything this deck has always needed. Uh, and then UA Stadium, which is the like crazy search card. And there's the normal summon, so there's the search for the really broken one that like bounces to search and summon. And the one with the negate. Down oh, down. Perfect Ace. Is, perfect Ace is really strong. Yeah. I like that card. Got a couple in perms. So, like, now you gotta play through two in perms, and, like, this guy's negate. Or so I thought. It turns out that there's a lot more at work here. Uh, so, that's just not gonna work, but he still has Numeron Wall. So, here's Trial 2. Discard a card to negate that. Chain this, which is really strong. Uh, chaining Midfielder to that is amazing, because that's just gonna give you this dude from your hand. And then that's going to boost everyone. And he had the Numeron Network anyway. So that's three, the third time Numeron Network has come into play. But uh, Libero Spiker can do that. And then Player Manager is a pop. And then on top of everything, it's still Eldland. And oh, the guy puts it in the misplays column. it right into the Infirm column. Oh, God. <laughs> I hate that Numeron Network deck. Actually, I don't hate it. It's like... It's really cool, but it's kind of annoying because it's a yeah, best of one. Sometimes it's... Ah, oh, I've got nothing for this. It's just <laughs> aggravating. But that was really cool, uh, Sam. Very well played there. UA just stopping him from playing. You kept him off that Numeron Network three times, and then uh, opponent rages into the wrong zone. But yeah, guys, please submit your replays to us. Uh, there's a link in every YouTube video if you go follow our... Uh, in there you can find a place where you can contact Dan and then you, uh, we'll scout your replays and the best ones will feature and we'll talk them through. So but we really appreciate it because without your help we couldn't keep creating great content like this. And I'm going to say it's great content because if I don't like it I can't expect you to like it. Yeah. I, I do have one last question before we hop into the yeah. climb of Utopia here. Uh, yeah. From my understanding one of the better cards was Ultimate Dragonic Utopia Ray, and you don't play yeah. that one. Was there any reason why? Ultimate uh, Dragonic... Uh, which, can you just show me the card in the deck builder real quick? Uh, yes, I can. It's, that's easier for me than trying to remember cards that I don't play. You know, that's fair. Open up the Mattopia deck. Oh, this one's not good. Um... So essentially, it's like when a card or effect is activated that targets this card, or when this card is targeted for an attack, that does include your own effects. You can quick effect, quick one ZW monster from your hand or deck to this card. Um, once between you attach one material, target face of card signal to the number of ZW monster cards equipped to this card, and get their effects. I don't like it because Ray is just better in the other Ray, it just feels much better. You go ahead and equip Pegasus, and you've got a negate on that, and then you've got a negate on the other thing, and then I don't need to worry about targeting it with anything. Okay. You, you can build a budget version of the deck just straight out of this Utopia structure, uh, where that card does come up. But uh, I find that uh, Leo does everything that I need it to. That was just oh, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even spot that they shared the same name. Uh, 
them because it's just a card I just didn't consider playing. I just didn't think it was uh, better than my other options. Uh, Matt Tor, I guess. All right. Well, I mean, I just I wanted to know because like he's even the no, counter no, card course. of Lightning Overdrive. Like he was the the boss monster of all the new support, and you're like, nah, not for me. So I think yeah. We're to, be, to be honest, like there could be situations where it comes up and it's pretty good, but I'm really happy with the list I ended up. Which, but I'll go over that when we get to the deck profile at the end of this. Uh, so this one should be Punish MD Thunder Dragons. Ooh, that's an expensive deck. Thunder Dragons are so annoying. Thunder Dragon Colossus just should not be legal. <laughs> I think it's There's still a... forbidden in the TCG. Yeah, it's again, I, I say that about basically card in every boss card in every deck, but that just kind of tells you the power level of the at this point. I mean, Colossus uh, is different though. Col like, there's some. This is the thing that's messed up. This has never been legal at the same time as Colossus in the TCG, thankfully. But oh, Nemesis Corridor. Yeah, uh, that lets you summon Colossus in every deck. Put back a yep. Weather Painter monster to make Colossus. Like you can do, like that's every deck. But uh, the thing about Colossus is the whole Thunder Dragon deck is terrible. Every single card in the Thunder Dragon deck doesn't do anything. This guy's effect can't even activate if you have any fast effect. Like. Thunder Dragons are one of the weakest decks ever made, but this card like single-handedly carries it because it makes everyone else's deck somehow worse. <laughs> like uh, the, it's it, one of the it, worst it, decks it, ever, but now your deck is even worse than mine. It's it's Ophion. It's Evil Swarm Ophion for the new generation. Yeah, it stops your opponent's setup. That's uh, and it also protects itself, so it's not something you can get rid of. And Nemesis Corridor, because uh, I saw. Uh, I think it's Alex was asking what it does. Essentially, you just get to special summon it, and it's the Thunder Monster. It yeah. also puts one of those banished cards back into your deck so that you can use your Thunder Dragons again. So the thing about Colossus specifically is it's during the turn of Thunder Monster's effect activated in the hand. And by being a Thunder Monster, it activates in the hand to summon itself by shuffling back any banished monster. You could unironically like banish Malicious to summon Malicious and then put a Malicious back to summon this card. Turn this into Colossus, and then the Malicious on the board can now get another Malicious from the deck because you put it back. Yeah. Like, that that's just a, that's a thing that, that's out there for anyone who wants to try that. But, uh, so he's got a standard Thunder Dragon thing here. He's got his Titan, yeah. which you have a million ways. Like, if he so much as, like, discards Thunder Dragon Dark, you could just activate Called by the Grave to stop it, and then also Titan doesn't get to activate anymore. Like, pfft. It's a silly deck. <laughs> and you've yeah, got the Empire to turn to... off Colossus, so his whole deck doesn't do anything now. I, I can uh, talk smack on Thunder Dragon for hours. It's such a bad deck, but you got your save, yeah. which you're a big fan of. Yeah, I've also got Caught by the Grave, which is uh, mean song. After the Ash Block, I've got the negate for it. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we summoned the Dododo. The Dododo's Bar from the hands, super back the uh, automatic, and the opponent goes for infinite impermanence. Pretty strong, but I've got everything I need to actually play now. Yeah, uh, I feel like impermanence was a little premature. No, they sh if they were gonna, yeah, they could have stopped um, a number of things, but my opponent's now given me uh, the opportunity to go for a utopia double uh, one shot over their colossus because they paid a thousand life points with the instant fusion. Yeah, so like this is the guy I imperm every single time. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I'd have taken the Imperm there, I would have uh, gone off and just done my regular combo, so I'd have then been able to turn his board. But at this point, I've forced my opponent to have uh, exactly one card in their deck to not die, and it's this one. But you knew he did have. Uh, yeah, it puts him on a hundred. Uh, Kaminari attack. He instant fusioned and then banished the Kaminari attack and the egg from his hand, which searched for another copy of the egg. Yeah, so if I'd have been more on the ball there, I... Probably could have done this differently, but I leave him on a hundred life points. <laughs> See, now he had this for like the pop, but again, you had like when he discarded the egg, you had called by the grave to negate the titan from activate. Well, I guess he did it in the damage step. Huh? It, it does it in damage step, so I can't call by the grave. Yeah, which is I uh, mean very smart from opponent. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now I've got like um, my full combo essentially. Well, oh, almost full combo because I haven't got the Draco features, but. I can get Leo Ray, now Leo Ray turns off that stupid Thunder Dragon for the rest of the game. I've got Caught by the Grave, very good against this, and then I'll <laughs> Caught get by the my... Grave on that Colossus will negate the effective one on the field. It doesn't even... I thought it only did activated effects, that's really funny, I like that. Yeah, so I'm one material short on my uh, number 
So we just go ahead and make Zeus. And now I've definitely got lethal through whatever my opponent tries to do. Because at some point they're going to end their turn and Zeus is going to sweep them. Chaos space. Love you in here. Yeah, noting Leo Ray's negation effect is permanent. Do you question my wisdom? Why? Oh yeah, because I've got the um, Pegasus in play, and Pegasus can. Uh... What's really cool about Pegasus is that uh, when your opponent tries to chain block you with uh, clever triggers stacking up at the same time, you don't actually resolve the. Uh, Pegasus until their monster effect resolves, and you just apply your Pegasus effect and it gets. Doesn't use a chain either, so your opponent can't interact with it. Yeah, there's. Oh, a, yeah, now I can just use. Th there's a card older than me called Layar Deliberator that's really cool for that. It's a continuous effect that targets, which is super strange, but. Yeah, and that's. Uh, yeah, Meaty 1994, yeah, and if Skill Drain's out, your Leo still has an negate. Uh, granted, your opponent's probably not playing a lot of monster effects uh, when they've got Skill Drain out. Uh, yeah, so that was a Final Dragon game, pretty clean, taking that down. Um, Final Dragons are kind of an annoying. It's just, again, because sometimes you just, like, you can't do anything, and yeah. that sucks, but breaking their field isn't that challenging if, you, if you're if you playing uh, the right cards. It basically keeps a lot of fun decks out of the format if uh, it becomes big. Yeah, a, a big thing and that's very helpful to learn, uh, most people learn it for beating Paleozoics, but Titan is the same way. They have to chain directly to what activates, but they're not trigger effects. So if your opponent has a Paleozoic monster in the graveyard or a Titan in the field, and they activate a trap card or discard a thunder monster, uh, you as the player still get to make the next action before they can chain the Paleozoic trap in their graveyard or the Titan on the board. If you activate any effect in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, flip up a Wabaku, it doesn't matter. Titan can't chain to Avaku, it's not the discard of a Thunder Monster. The Taylor Zoic Trap in the Graveyard can't chain to uh, Upstart Goblin, it's not a quick effect, uh, for some reason the card came out. It, it can't chain to Snow in your Graveyard. Like, they, they can't use the Paleozoics in the Graveyard, they can't use Titan to pop things. You can just interrupt those cards, and then they don't get to use their pop. and. Only the Egg and the Dark are quick effects, so they have at most two chances to even use Titan on your turn. Outside of that, they, the Titan's just a big vanilla. It's like 32, 3300. He's not very scary. Um, Colossus is the, the scary one because it slows your deck down dramatically and has all the protection. And I know Titan also has protection, but it's not like Colossus's. And then... Um, Colossus is the problem in that yeah. deck. And I'd say problem loosely, like, if you're playing Infinite Permanence, Forbidden Droplets, or Forbidden Chalice, uh, Forbidden Chalice is also a great card if you plan to go second a lot. Uh, well, actually, sorry, if you plan to go first a lot, Forbidden Chalice is very, very good. Um, because it's basically Impermanence that you can use at any point. Impermanence is, uh, is yeah, you can make different arguments based on what the game, uh, what the game situation is, yeah. but... And I mean, uh, there's all of, also all those cards are good against dragons. Uh, Chalice and Book of Moon, I think, are really underrated on Master Duel. They're, not only are they really good in the best of one format, but they're only rares. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're affordable. Uh, so uh, if you don't have the sword, 90 like, ultra rare yeah. gems for your impermanences, Chalice is a very good substitute. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely go with that. All right, so my opening hand is actually really, really good here. Uh, <laughs> and you find go first. One of. I actually miss playing this game by uh, using the toggles. Uh, my opponent's playing Lurlisk, I've got Nibiru, so I'm feeling really good. Uh, but when my opponent gets to a key part of their combo, I switch my toggle on, and as soon as the game stutters, and immediately... and then change it to play. <laughs> There's uh, four. <laughs> this is where you would flick it to off. Yeah, so it is currently set to off uh, when I did this. If I remember, it was a little while ago, Doug. I'm thinking, yeah, when my opponent gets to F0, I will go ahead at uh, Nibiru, because I figured they'd go F0 first uh, to then turn off Nibiru. Hey there, Gatsu Nova. It's good to see you. So yeah, my opponent actually goes for Bird of Sovereignty. I'm like, oh, okay, this... Uh, opponent then goes for a search. I switch my thing on. Uh, the game starts for a second. and Wait, when do I switch it on? I think I switch it on at this point, because I'm thinking, yeah, okay, he's going to go F0. 
Well, he needs two Xyz monsters. So yeah, right yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. This is where I would Nibiru. I know yeah. you're waiting for the F0, which makes sense, but I think I would go for it here either way. Yeah, I have it set to off, and my opponent immediately goes end phase, because like that's where it stutters. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, if I activate Nibiru now, um, my opponent still gets uh, their barrier statue. So I'm like stuck with the Nibiru, I don't get to use it. Uh, so not exactly the best way to play that with the toggles, I messed up a little bit. I'm just saying that uh, he just went for the end phase. Like, he went end phase to, like, go around the Nibiru, but it still would have asked you, do you want a Nibiru in his main phase and tribute his whole board? Like, I messed up the toggles. I, I, I can't understand. Exactly I'm, I'm thinking from his on. perspective, what he tried oh. to do there. He only got away with that because of your toggle mess up, and there's no way he was thinking to himself, oh, this guy's going to mess up his toggles. No, <laughs> yeah, that's true. One of the things I do like about the Utopia deck is that. You've got a lot of main deck monsters that just beat up a barrier statue, and then you combo main phase two. Yeah, I mean, I I've always liked that about Picari, and very been very sad that Doyon doesn't beat up barrier statue on multiple. That's occasions. actually one of the biggest problems uh, in the Lurless matchup is that you've only got one normal summon in your deck that actually beats up the barrier statue. Whereas, like from here, I can now go comfortably throw my whole hand at the uh, table and make an F zero as well for good measure. Uh, we make Sage to attach two, and we always use the Onomat Dododo -do -do, so we can use Uberbar to get back the Onomat, and then the uh, Golem pulls it, the Dododo -do -do pulls itself out from the graveyard. You're noticeably better with this deck already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've improved quite a bit uh, at this stage. And then we've got Prime Math Mech, can then detach three, search for Astral Utopia. This can get me numbers protection. Uh, and I've got F0 as well. <laughs> You're just like showing him how he should have done it. <laughs> Here's the card yeah. you were trying to summon. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this is the card that you need in needed to play. And then we've got Numbers Protection, and I can just comfortably go ahead and go for my Utopia line, uh, search for my Rank Up Magic. My opponent can't even Ash Blossom me now because I've got the uh, F0 in play. So I didn't you know first. how you searched for Numbers Protection. I just assumed that I you could. I messed up. I should have played play one. <laughs> change tactics early. I should have played it earlier, I missed a draw there, uh, yeah. just noticing, but I, I always feel funny about playing it because I'm like, if I draw the um, Pegasus, it takes away one of my negates. If I draw the double or nothing, it's like, change tactics is great and at the same time can be like really, really difficult. This is a deck that would benefit tremendously from Illusion of Chaos when that card comes out. I have no idea what it does, but... Uh, are you familiar with Magician's Souls? Uh, yeah, that's a good card. So, Illusion of Chaos is a level 7 ritual monster. Spellcaster, so Magician's Souls can dump it from the deck. That says, you can reveal it in your hand to search your deck for Magician's Souls and add it to your hand, then take any card in your hand and bottom deck it. So, it could put itself back to dump 4 souls, or it could put back things like your double or nothing if you draw into it. Ooh, yeah, okay, that's, I like that. At the moment I'm playing um, a random spell for, for that reason. Uh, so yeah, at this point, um, my opponent's real option there that I'm trying to bait them into is making the same mistake attacking, uh, trying to get their Zeus in play. But I've now got uh, so many negates <laughs> and attack redirects that my yeah. opponent's zero of deck is going to fall apart. So I still And I've got the mirror, this guy, if it yeah. goes wrong. ZS Sage is a special summon if you control exactly one card. I ne you never use the second effect. Like a lot of people play the ZW uh, t Saber Tiger, okay, uh, which you can then uh, equip directly from your hand to Utopia Monster. It can't be targeted in the game's 1300 attack. This deck cannot afford to play cards that brick if you draw them in your opening hand and you don't. You end up just going, oh, okay, I'm kind of stuck. I this is why I played the uh, copy of the ZW Monster. Monster into my extra deck so that I could never draw it accidentally. What I was thinking with the Magician Souls was uh, this card and this card just turn into Pot of Greed when you're like you're done. I notice a lot of your games you just end with the two continuous spells in play, and I'm like, Souls would just draw two cards there and then be a body. But yeah, I mean that would be great. So yeah, no, definitely something to consider for upgrading this deck when that card is available in the game. Uh, 
And right. our next duel. I don't recognize this character. Interesting. Uh, I think this is another Tri Brigade Lyralisk game. <laughs> this one says it's a one turn long, so <laughs> I'm surprised you know what your opponent's deck is at all. Uh, I confirmed their deck before we did the stream. When I was making them public, I went back uh... through so I could uh, try to knock this stuff. Bird FTK. <laughs> Bird is the word. Uh, really great going first hand here. Um, and uh, I, I think a lot of my replays show me going first. Oh yeah, this is the game where my opponent um, messes up, right? So opponent then uh, chains max C. Never do this. If you're the opponent, don't be opponent. Because now I can Ash Blossom. If you just waited and then max C after the chain resolve, I would not have been able to play Ash Blossom because I've just called by the grave there. Oh my god. <laughs> No, you don't. All you had to do is let the chain resolve, then play max C, and my turn would have been a Busca pass. But because he got a bit frisky with the chain, I'm now allowed to resolve my Ash Blossom. My opponent's Ash Blossom, no longer uh, And I can now full combo. And my opponent's played their whole hand out. Wow. Well, they played all their, they played most of their interaction. So if you pause here, actually, there's an interesting uh, interaction. So if you play this and they effect failure or infinite impermanence it yeah, instead of the golem is that you can special summon the zubaba anytime that you control a gagaga monster which the onomatopoeia pretends to be so if your opponent even if they shut this down this this um effect activation you can still summon this uh one guy and then you can make uh you can make some plays off of it but if they don't respond to it i then get all three monsters in play and i can do full combo I've seen Gary on resume now at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think my opponent uh, sees where this goes and concedes pretty promptly. Uh, they might let me do my whole combo before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as soon as they see the F0, especially since you said they're a Lyrilisk player, so they know exactly yeah. what this card means. I'm exactly yeah, one card, yeah. they as soon as they see that. I'm one card short of getting the Astral Utopia, which is why I didn't uh, go for Prime Mac Mech. And I did the Gagaga -ga instead there, because uh, you have to send a card to the graveyard in order to get the search. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the extra card that I wanted to give up, so I was just like, yeah, there's no point going down the Prime Mac Mech route. Uh, duel number eight is uh, Thunder Dragons, I think. Yeah, there's a. Two Thunder Dragon Cycle on this. And um, my opponent goes first again. And this time you don't have the Imperm. No, and I've drawn the double or nothing. You've uh, drawn the so spell that... too. Wow, yeah. this hurts. Oh, this is a really rough hand that I had on this one. But this Old deck Sargo. is... This deck is very good. Like, a lot of its hands get to your combo. And that's why I kind of... Uh, even when you do draw stuff like this. Uh, again, if I was playing uh, Lyrilis Tri Brigade, like... That deck never seems to brick. At least I never see it bricking when mm. I play against it. Um, it's like this deck kind of feels like a less consistent version of the, uh, the same kind of oppressive uh, feel. So like if you're going to spend all the gems and you're like, okay, I want an absolute S tier, I'll probably consider the Lyrilis deck before the Utopia deck. But uh, I do really like that you get access to a few things like the Utopia double uh, OTK, which Lyralisks can't have. You get Barrier Statue, but, you know, if you draw the Barrier Statue, it's like, hmm, my normal summon Barrier Statue. I hope that gets me there. So this guy's playing, like, the full chaos. Like, this is the most expensive deck in Master Duel. This guy's playing. Unless you count that one Sky Striker dude who had an entire deck of Royal Rares. Somebody's done that already? Yep, he dropped 60 grand. 60 grand? Yep. I would have bought two Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I would have felt like that would have been my money uh, in the long term. I get like 6% on the first Bitcoin and I get additional interest. All right. Oh, I, I, this isn't a cryptocurrency stream. Let's see it. Let's see. Sixth card in turn. Let's see it. There it uh, is. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> of course. Of course. This game probably wouldn't have had a replay. So <laughs> it's uh, in shop. Opponent's got double... Um, only one of them works, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But it just—it is a bit of a thing to consider. So even if I do 
uh, find a way around one. So yeah, I can now do this. Opponent goes straight for the snipe. Uh, they sniped the wrong one. Uh, they should have gone for Zubaba, and I think they go for on the Onomat. Yeah, so that was bad. Uh, if Opponent would have went for my Zubaba, I'm effectively stuck on... Uh, well, actually, I'm not stuck, because I've got I've already drawn the rank-up magic. Uh, I just realised I messed up twice in this game. Because <laughs> I could I could one-shot for the Utopia double here. Not um, for nothing, but something that occurs to me that's really funny. Borlode Dragon taking this Titan would mean if he did activate an effect, your Titan would activate before his and stop his from ever activating. <laughs> oh, that's actually quite funny. Ha. Uh, so yeah, I can get my Onomat card back. Uh, from here, and then we've got the Sage. Well, I don't even need to get Sage at this point because uh, I've already drawn the rank up magic. I should have Utopia double, but I'm thinking if my opponent has... Why do I do this? I don't... Oh yeah, because I'm... Um... Zeus. I realize my opponent's um, Thunder Dragons are all protecting themselves, so I just go for Zeus because I know that their Thunder Dragon deck can't really recover. But I could have just won the game uh, off of that, because the thing I was worried about is my opponent had another Thunder Dragon, but... They would have just used that anyway. Yeah, I've got two more materials for, for another sweep. Uh, I was worried that they would have just destroyed my Utopia. So I, I should have just won the game. I chose not to win the game. Nitrogen Gas Dispersal. Huh. Okay, opponent. Now what? Uh for clarity, for people on YouTube, that's what his opponent's username was. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, Literally sorry, apart. I realized the chat's not on there. Connection <laughs> failed, so that means the opponent pressed Alt F4 on their keyboard. Uh, yeah. To Zeus. And that, I think, is uh, Magon, is this last replay. And then we'll go through the, uh, the deck feature. Sure. Uh, so this is uh, opponent playing Phantom Knights, and they are going for the Rongon mini uh opener, which is disgusting. Uh, again, it's something that just shouldn't be legal, but it is, so we just play like it is. Draw double maxi, very, very strong uh, to opponent's opening emergency teleport, and infinite impermanence uh, will really pull its weight in this game. Yeah. My favorite out to Rongo is Xyz Encore, but it's only good against Rongo, so... Uh, yeah, exactly. And there's people playing it, though, because they're so sick of Rongo. Like, I've seen people discarding it for the discard effect. So, opponent goes that if they full combo, if I have 20 cards and can't play any of them, uh, Maxi doesn't matter. So, that's their line of thinking when they go play into the Maxi challenge. Yeah. Uh, get some, some Nova. If you want to donate uh, some money to the stream for the gems, for the Mask Hero uh, deck, we can definitely feature that. <laughs> you just have to... Uh, Go ahead and uh, open the credit card first and show some love. Yeah, Otherwise, you're gonna join a deck that really we expensive. Play. <laughs> you're broken, desperate. Uh, then you're gonna. Then I hope you enjoy some Utopia. Got stacks of Utopia this week. Uh, so I know where this is going uh, for the Rongo, and I know that the game is over at this point because I've got infinite impermanence. Twice. Yeah, exactly. And I know I'm going to literally have every card. So this thing negates monsters only, and you've got Imperm. Yeah, but opponents and I gone all in uh, for their Rongo, and they think, ah, oh, I made it, I made it. And he's got, of course, the Greedy for the uh, Nibiru if I had it. It's just like, um, yeah, no, you're not having that. And then opponent, uh, Gets really mad because I made them sit there and play out their whole combo. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you didn't have full combo in this hand. So. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to do the same thing to my opponent. But uh, yeah, just opponent plays into the maxi challenge and just gets destroyed by uh, infinite permanence. Good card. I just need to run to the rest room real quick. So, Dan, if you just want to talk to the chat and then I'll uh, Go over introduce the yeah. sure. deck profile and I'm, I'm not going to engage with chat whilst we're doing the deck profile, because I'm going to cut it out uh, for the YouTube. So before okay. we start, after I come back, if you give me the timestamp, it'll make it a little bit easier when I'm cutting the video out later. Sure. All right, well, uh, it's just us. How's everybody doing? I actually have a Rongo deck myself that looks nothing like the one you just saw. <laughs> this one is just trying to Rongo. Uh, but 
obviously way too expensive to be goofing around with. Uh, really, really easy to make uh, any deck in Master Duel once, but making a second deck is excruciatingly difficult. Uh, unless it's only commons and rares. Speaking of which, uh, data miners have found that the next event that we're getting is a uh, normals and rares only event. No supers or ultras. And I'm curious what kind of decks you guys are thinking you're going to play in that. Ah, not necessarily the next one. That's true. The next one could still be the, uh, the fusion one. Which I'm absolutely just going to play Burn in. But if you did have access to only normals and rares, what would you play? Megalith or Paleo Spiral? Are all the Megalith cards? Like, is full not... Wow. Full is only a normal. Okay. Well... A normal rare, sorry. Uh, I, I could be very confusing on Master Duel. Uh, that's definitely a contender. That That's pretty good. The deck absolutely does not need this card. Uh, it's Magician of Black Chaos Max. I'm also back for when you're ready, but yeah, go ahead and finish her. Oh, yeah. Is he yeah. not in here? Huh. There's a card that's just not on Master Duel. Magician Which of Black one? Chaos Max is just not in the game. The level 7 Ritual Monster. Uh, the, like, version of this guy, but good. Oh, oh, right, no, I remember. Is that from the, uh, the tins? Yeah. The uh, Ghost of Ruffles tins. Alternative red? No. Okay, oh, let me check Obelisk. Okay, it's because of the Kazuki Takahashi artworks. None of them are in the game. Like, there's only the one artwork of Obelisk here as well. Yeah, they absolutely should be. They'll probably, if they can, I'd recommend creating a bundle for the uh, Takahashi Arts and charge a fortune for it. Like, I'm hoping there's a board for each of the Egyptian gods. Uh, there's an easy board for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, uh, Slifer Academy, Ra Academy, Obelisk, Dorms. There's so much in the cosmetics lines, uh, but I'm kind of hoping they update the uh, content soon. Yeah, all the sleeves, you put them in bundles, like God Bundle, uh, GX Bundles. Free my boy Shadowroid. <laughs> what is your three cards you said are like the trilogy? It's uh, this guy. Your basic trio is uh, Dodo Do, Zuba Ba, and Onomatopoeia. That one? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the Utopia on a Matapia monster. Ah, okay. There you go. That's your basic trio. Right, so, uh, do you want to just quickly give me the timestamp of where we are on the live stream? Uh, 21, two, sorry, 2, 11, 42. 42, okay, right. That's great, because now I can find this super easy. So, guys, for the chat, I'm going to just run into this as if it's a deck prep. Diane will ask me some questions. After we finish this, uh, we'll answer any questions you've got in the chat. So just uh, feel free to queue them up. All right, okay, here we go. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another deck feature. This week, we are gonna be covering the Utopia deck, which is a deck that you may see a little bit of on the ladder, but um, we're gonna go through my build that I took all the way from the bottom of gold all the way up to plat one in about a week. Personally, I think this is a very strong deck. It's a contender for a tier one deck and something that's a whole lot of fun to play. So first I'll start with the hand traps is that's essentially the core of what you're going to be used whenever you build a deck in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh right now. I'm playing three copies of Maxi and I'm playing three copies of Ash Blossom. Uh, Maxi is a great card to stop the opponent from playing and it lets us draw into additional hand traps that we're playing into our deck. It fits really well here because there's so many cool combos that I want to play and having those extra cards help. I'm also playing a cross out designator uh, and having Maxi is one of the cards that this deck doesn't want to see the opponent play. So by having it in my deck, I've got it for room for cross site designator and I can benefit from uh, actually playing the Maxi. Uh, I also have Nibiru in the deck as it's very strong against a lot of matchups. Uh, and you also use it for cross site designator because this deck 
cannot make a monster negate before it makes its fifth summon. So you're very, very vulnerable to Nibiru in this deck. So the cross Egg Designator is another way of stopping that uh, Nibiru from hitting you. And there's quite a few matchups where you can actually play it. And you've got uh, cards that will let you discard the Nibiru if you draw it into a matchup where it's not so useful. So that's a uh, hand trap. So then we go to the core of the deck. And so, the first one we got is this uh, cool little Utopia guy, uh, Utopia Onomatopoeia, I believe. Sure. Uh, just a quick question. Um, yeah. Sure. How come you play one cross of Designator and two called by if cross of Designator and Nibiru is so important? Uh, so this is that's a good question. When when I look back at well, what I would change about this list, I would like to fit another cross type Designator into the deck. Originally, I didn't have the ultra rare gems. Uh, for another cross site designator, and I already had Cool by the Graves crafted for my uh, AI deck that I was playing. Sorry, my Attic Mister deck. Uh, cool by the Graves is also uh, just generally very strong against a, a lot of different things as well. So I think it's a great card. Uh, ultimately, to answer your question, I would go up on the cross site designators if uh, I find room in this deck for things I'd want to cut. So the main monster is your normal summon. It's going to be a Utopic on a. Here. So this card pretends to be a Zubaba, a Gagaga, and a Dodo Do, which then means that all of your support cards work with this card, and then this like, kind of acts as like the enabler for all of your other combos for these cards. Uh, very, very strong. You get to special summon one of each monster from your hand, uh, up to one of each of you. So you get to summon from your whole hand into play, and if you get Mac the as a chain, activate to this, uh, all the monsters special summon at exactly the same time, so you're one draw. Very, very strong card and is the normal summon of this deck. The next card in the deck list is the Zubaba. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, Zuba, Zubaba Bancho Gagaga. So uh, if you control a Zubaba or a Gagaga monster, so that's the Onomat, you can special summon this card from your hand. It's relevant in a few situations, which I'll cover uh, a little bit later. And also when I go through the combo guide, I'll talk you through some of that stuff as well, which you'll find in the next video in this feature. So this card being able to special summon from its hand is great uh, because it means that if your opponent responds to your automat effect, you've got an option to get the extra monster into play. And then the reason that this card is so strong is once per turn, you can special summon a Go 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 or Dodo Do monster from your graveyard, which is going to be the Utopia Onomat 90% uh, of the time because then that enables uh, the next card of your basic trio. Which is going to be Dodo Do Dwarf Go 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 Glove. Two Go, three Go Gloves. Yeah, Go 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 Glove. So this card says during your main phase, you can special summon one Zubaba or Gaga Ga monster. If you control a Go 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 or Dodo Do monster, except for this card, you can special summon it from the graveyard. So it's basically uh, an additional material for a rank four monster. Uh, it banishes itself when it leaves the field, but because we're playing a bunch of Exe monsters, that never comes up. Uh, it's always going to be under an Exe monster when it leaves the field. Uh, so these three make up your basic trio and combo based on uh, the Utopia Onomatopoeia, uh, the Zubaba Go Go, uh, Go 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 Coat, and the Dodo Do Dwarf. Uh, they're going to essentially enable you to summon all of your Exe monsters, which are then going to uh, ladder in different ways to create the ideal oppressive setup, which I'll cover uh, in the combo video. So the next part that we play as a one-off is the ZS Arm Sage. Now, this is basically, if you control a level four monster, you can special summon it uh, from your hand, which then gives you an extra monster for Utopia monster. We're never activating the, if this card is Exceed Summon effect, because if you have the ZW uh, Unicorn into your hand, uh, you can't actually activate, equip it from your hand. The main reason people play this in a lot of builds is there's a ZW weapon, I think it's um, Tiger or something, which gives the guy, yeah, if you just search the ZW, uh, no, it's not Tiger. Yeah, if you just search for the ZW card here, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? We're showing cards only that you own. Ah, there, there it is on the second. Oh, no, Lightning Blade. This is, no, this is the card, yeah. Uh, 12, kind of destroyed. It's the card next to it, actually. It's not Lightning Blade. It's the other one, which is next to it. Yeah, the Tornado Bringer. That's it. Struggling to remember which one there is, but the Tornado Bringer essentially makes and targetable and gives plus 1300 uh, attack points which can be very strong but this deck cannot afford to draw cards that it cannot play or do something with uh, immediately uh, because you're so much focused on setting up a, an oppressive turn one field 
uh, and this ultimately got cut from my deck. So the ZS, you never search use its search effect. You just use it as a special summon that you can search for from reinforcements of the army or from another card that I'll show you a little bit later in the deck. Next card, which is one of the most powerful turn one opening cards, is ZS Ascended Sage. So if you control no cards, you can special summon this from your hand. Uh, and if you summon a Utopia Exe monster with this card, you get to search your deck for the rank up magic, uh, which is great because that means we only have to play one rank up in our entire deck. We've got a special summon, which gives us half of a Utopia. And then when you make when you summon Utopia, this then gets you the rank up magic and gives you your full combo. We can also special summon this straight from our deck with one of our Exe monsters, but I'll cover that when we get to the extra deck in a minute. All around, if you ever want a card in every opening hand, you play Ascend, uh, ZS Ascending Sage. I think this is um, just such a great card. Obviously, if you only draw ZS Sage and then free infinite and permanence and a uh, numbers protection, you're not having a great day, but uh, those hands are so far and few between. Uh, I think uh, Sage is my favorite uh, opener. Astral Utopia. So this card is incredible. Uh, you search out of your deck through in certain situations where you can make sure that you can discard a card to search your deck for any Zexal number or number of spell or trap card. You can get the automatic cards um, as well, but normally uh, you won't be able to special summon this from your hand at the time when you need an automatic card. You don't really want to play more than this one of this because uh, if you are forced into a situation where you generally with it. Uh, but a cool thing with this is if your opponent goes first and they leave an XE mod, you can still special summon it. it. Just requires there's an XE's monster on the field in order for you to special summon this. And then you can use this effect to send a card from your hand or your side of the graveyard to get uh, one of your number cards, which is going to be uh, Numbers Protection, the counter trap uh, in the deck, which then gives us an extra negate, whilst also being a rank 4 material for when we're continuing our combo. We also fish this out of the deck in the middle of one of our combos so that we don't need to draw this. So it's fantastic as a one-off. You can't craft this card. It's locked. You have to buy the Utopia structure deck. So if you want to try messing around with multiple copies, you are going to be uh, yeah, exactly required to buy three copies of the structure deck. Uh, the only ZW weapon we play is Pegasus Twin Saber. Uh, this we are equipping directly from our deck to our Utopia Leo uh, Chaos Ray. And then this acts as a negate. Uh, you, there are situations where you can special summon this card and you can equip it from the field. Normally you're only going to be taking damage on your first if you are playing Xyz change tactics and then you purposely burn your life points below 2000. So then you can special summon the ZW uh, Pegasus Twin Saber. But drawing this in your opening hand, it's always really depressing because then your Ray doesn't have a monster to equip in the main deck, which I'll explain one of my decisions in the extra deck exactly for this scenario. Uh, when we get to it. Uh, then, yeah, now we're kind of over to our spell line. We play Buster, all around great card. Uh, we're going all in with our hand pretty much every every game we can. Harpy's Weapon also lets you commit your cards without your opponent's back row getting in the way. Uh, we're playing Reinforcements of the Army because it searches for every card in our deck. So. Almost. I, I, I just noticed, like, the ones you play three of, Rhoda can get, but the only one Rhoda can't get is the one you're playing two of. Yeah, so Dodo -Do Dwarf is actually not a copy of everyone summon. Uh, and that's why it ended up coming down as a two of in it. Because originally I was playing three, and I kept finding out I drew two Dodo Dos. It was kind of a huge problem. Uh, you can discard it with uh, the Automatopera, but this deck really hates getting Automatopera and Ash Blossomed. And if you don't have the Call by the Grave of the Crosshead designator, you can end up in really bad situations. And Dodo Do. Uh, ended up being something that I cut down to two because the other two are can play off of each other a lot better than the Dodo Do. The Dodo Do is very vulnerable. Automatopara is one of the best search cards in in the game. You search for one Zubaba, one Gagaga, -ga -ga, one Gogogo, -ga -ga, one Dodo Do. You get two of them, but they can't be the same, which is great because we get Utopia Automata, uh, Automatopia, I think it is, and then we get the um, Zubaba or the Dodo Do -do -do, depending on which one we drew. Or if we didn't draw anything, we just get the, uh, the Utopia and we get Zubaba. And that then gives us enough to, to play off of. And we also get to discard a card, which we can then get back with the Zubaba if necessary. Zexal Construction is the last card I added to the deck. Uh, it lets you reveal a card from your hand, and then you get to add a ZW monster from your deck to your hand, which you're never using. A ZS monster, which can then get you your Sage. A Zexal Spellatrap. A rank up magic, so you've got another way of getting to your uh, rank up spell. 
uh, or rank down magic, which you're not playing these off. So the cool thing with this is it lets you put double or nothing back in your deck so that you don't lock yourself out of the Utopia, Utopia double OTK a little bit later. It so, is three more copies of this guy who you said you want to see in like every single hand. Exactly. So I get the... He's also a warrior. Uh, Zexal Construction searches for it, and the ZS Sage in my extra deck also searches for that card. Ah, uh, the Sage means you definitely don't need it. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. that leaves us with Hyper Rank Up Magic Utopia Force. This card is incredible, and the heart and soul of the deck, it reason that it works and is competitive as I believe it is. So essentially you can target one rank up, rank 9 or lower Utopia Exe monster, and then you just rank it up to a rank 10 or higher Utopia or Utopic monster from your extra deck. Uh, when this card's in the graveyard, when you summon a number monster, you can attach this card directly to that monster as a Exe material, which will then let you use the effect. It's very relevant for number 99, which we play on our extra deck, which special summons uh, Utopia monsters or number monsters uh, from our extra deck, but then they don't have any materials. So then we attach the hyper rank up magic and we've got our material to play off. Very, very powerful when we only have to play one because ZS Sage searches for it, share the deck, and we also have Zexal Construction in case something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Exe Change Tactics we play as a one off because we get to draw cards, pay life points for it, and we can chain block. Ash Blossom from stopping our Sage from going off. So what happens is you make you, you summon a Utopia monster, it triggers uh, from being summoned as Chain Link 1, then you apply the Exe Chain Tactics trigger effect as Chain Link 2, pay 500 life points. If your opponent uses Ash Blossom, they will stop you from drawing a card that you paid 500 life points for, and then you'll search your deck for the uh, rank of magic. And also, as you ladder through the different Utopias, you can keep drawing cards, and that's going to give you the hand traps to stop your opponent from breaking uh, the really oppressive field that you're going to be setting up. So, all around, this is great. You only play it as a one-off. Uh, you you can only control one, and you don't need to draw more. Automatic pickup uh, can search your deck for a Zubaba, Gagaga, -ga or Gogogo, -go -go or Dodo -do -do monster, uh, but it can also get Onomata Para, which is the main card that you're searching for. Uh, this can then get you uh, the rest of your combo. It's a great card for fishing for Ash Blossom as well. And this is the card that you send to the graveyard with uh, Astral Utopia uh, because it stays in play. And then you can search for your uh, numbers protection. Another cool interaction with this that sometimes comes up is that if your opponent Kaijus you, you can turn the Kaiju to a level four monster. And then you can use that as a material for one of your Utopia summons. So. Normally that, that rarely comes up, but it can do. Double or nothing is a brick and we have to play it because it's the only way we can resolve our Utopia double. But there are times where this can just win you the game. Uh, one of the combos in the deck, if your opponent leaves any monster with less than two fires in attack in attack mode, is that you summon Utopia double. Utopia double doubles the attack of a monster that it changes into. So it ranks, it, essentially you use the double as a material. You summon Utopia, number 39 Utopia. Number 39 Utopia, then uh, doubles its attack to 5,000. Uh, you attack, you use Utopia's own effect to negate its own attack. And then you play double or nothing, which means it can attack again, it doubles its attack, and you attack for 10,000. And you can just uh, run over opponents that have left monsters in attack mode uh, and do 10,000 damage out of nowhere. It closes a lot of games. Uh, and if, if there's times where you are forced to use Utopia double, effect and you can't actually get the OTK, you can always discard this to Onomatopera or uh, Astral Utopia to search for another card. You don't want to draw this, um, but you can put it back in the deck with Zexal Construction if that comes up. Uh, we already covered Call by the Grave because uh, we're going first in, yeah, Numbers Protection, we'll cover this one. Uh, so Spell Trapper Monsters activate where you control a number monster, negate the activation and destroy it. Perfect. If that was the only text on this, I would still play this card, but if a number monster is destroyed, you can get back this card, back to the field, and then you can use it again. So this is a very strong cap. Spell speed free. Your opponent's not going to be able to respond to the activation. So you can close some chains out uh, with this to ensure that your effects go through. So main card of the deck, number 39 Utopia. Um, this card you can do the double or nothing OTK with, but primarily you're going to be using this as a material to uh, rank up to the higher level Utopia monsters. 
Uh, Chaos Ray, uh, sorry, C39 Utopia Ray, we... Uh, because then it means that we have an extra XE material under number 99, which or is uh, the main card we're summoning. Or Zeus, yeah, which comes up. It means that Zeus, the difference between Zeus having three materials and four materials is so massive that you play the ones uh, C39 just simply because it gives you that extra material. Uh, Utopia Double, we are playing a copy of this because it gives us the OTK. It will... Our rank up magic search gets negated that we can use this effect to get up to number 99. Uh, you can also randomly pull 8,000 attack out of your extra deck uh, that has the attack of the opponent's monster. And sometimes you can sneak an OTK through an opponent that way. There's also a quick effect, Utopia Double, which can let you do play some sneaky plays around some opponent stuff. We wait, play one copy of S39 for a troublesome that we that do something when we attack them. Uh, this goes up to 5,000. It also gives you an act to uh, adding this to arrival should you run into it. And there's a lot of stuff that this answers. It cannot be used as an XE uh, material. So if you, you can't rank this up or uh, do anything like that to it. So you've got to keep that in mind that if you uh, S39 that you are using it to attack. Number 99 Utopia Dragonar is an insane card. Uh, it's a quick effect, which means that you can use it once in your turn and then draw phase. Uh, you detach two materials from this card, you special summon in your extra deck any number monster between 1 and 100, and uh, you can't attack directly with any other monsters the turn you use that, but because you're using it on your first turn, you're not going to be attacking anyway. And this locks you into XE summons for the, the rest of the turn, but we're only playing XE monsters, so that's irrelevant. Uh, it has another effect as well, which lets you uh, reduce the of an opponent's monster who's attacking you to zero. Every opponent forgets about this, and if they don't, it also means that you can mess with your opponent's battle phase. I had the card is... right in front of me and I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, this card is... Uh, the, the messing with the opponent's battle I think they've managed to break your field, uh, is a great way of um, breaking their morale and forcing a concession in most cases. Ultimately, a Utopia Ray, we're summoning this uh, through our number 99. So when it's... Uh, you detach a material to equip a ZW monster from your deck or extra deck to this card. So we are equipping ZW uh, Pegasus Spear. Uh, I don't believe it's called Pegasus Spear, but it's the Pegasus. Uh, and then this has a negate, which is permanent. Uh, it halves the attack as well, so it shrinks the opponent's monster and negates it. And we're using it in our turn and using it in the opponent's turn. It's very, very strong. And uh, the ZW cards put attack points onto this as well. So this can then basically uh, attack over any monster in the game. We play one copy of ZW Dragon Halberd in instead of playing the Tornado Bringer because we can never draw this accidentally. And this gives us a 3,000 attack equip uh, spell that we can essentially play from our extra deck onto our Leo. So there are games where you draw the, the Pegasus Spear and you can't attach, attach it to your Leo. You can equip this instead and then you get a 5,000 500 attack Leo, that keeps its negate and drink effect. Uh, number 38, Hope Harbringer, Dragon Titanic Galaxy. We are getting this card out of our extra deck in the opponent's draw phase with uh, number uh, 99, Dragon R. Essentially, uh, this negates a spell card and attaches it as a material, which is uh, very strong against things like Adding Mister, where you can attach to AI Lamb. It means that your opponent's Lightning Storm suddenly looks a lot less, a lot less good. Uh, you can take away Pots of Desires, and you can even use this to negate the opponent's Drytron Ritual spell as well. Uh, and then it attaches to it so they can't get it out of the graveyard. Very, very powerful. And you can also redirect any opponent's monster attack to this card. Now, the reason that that's extra powerful is there are times when your opponent will uh, try to make an Exe monster that can attack directly so that they can summon Zeus. This just redirects the attack to itself, and then the opponent runs headfirst into it and cries, and you you set up the chain so that you use Hope Harbringer Dragon first, and then your second is the number 99 Dragonar, and then your opponent's attack goes to zero and they charge straight into Titanic Galaxy. Um, and it also means that you can put all of your uh, monsters in defense mode if you want to potentially blank a lightning storm. Uh, that becomes an open play to you, and then you can redirect the attack to uh, Titanic Galaxy anyway. So it gives you a lot of flexibility with your setup, depending on what uh, what's happening in the metagame. And then if we want to go to our next card. 
Yeah. Uh, let's do this package next. Yes, number F zero utopic future. So you have to summon this with two monsters except number monsters. So we can't use any of our utopia cards. Uh, essentially, you can take control of your opponent's uh, monsters until the end of the battle phase. There are times when it comes up, but normally you're summoning this on turn. Use it as an XE material to summon uh, number F0 Utopic Draco Future, which is one of the most ridiculous cards printed in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, essentially, uh, you can once per turn detach a material from it uh, to take control uh, to negate an opponent's monster effect and take control of it. This card also cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, so the opponent's very limited on the ways that they can get around this, and it's a, a negation that. It's going to have about three materials attached to it usually, so you can use it during your turn, during their turn, and again, very, very powerful card and very, very oppressive. Uh, we play Gagaga -ga -ga Magician in our extra deck. This lets you get back an XE monster from the graveyard, which if you get back Utopia, you can turn it to an S39. Uh, you can also uh, bring back a monster to use for F0 as well, should you come to it. But you also get a... When you use this as a material, it, the F0 monster, uh, yeah, sorry, Utopic Future Exe monster gains the effect where you detach two materials from this card, target one Exe monster you control, until the end of the turn, change its attack to 4000 and negate its effects. But the reason you want to do that is Utopic Sage uh, lets you uh, banish it from the graveyard to protect your Utopia monsters from destruction effects. So what you can do is use the Gagaga -ga -ga card to detach the Sage because normally it gets stuck under Utopia Dragon Futures. So you detach this, send it to the graveyard, and then you can protect yourself from Lightning Storm or any other destruction effects. Uh, you can protect your whole field without giving up any of your... You get like an extra interaction, in addition to like the four or five interrupts that you're going to have during your opponent's turn. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, all around... Uh, in my original list, Gagaga -ga -ga was not in the deck, and as soon as I added it, I did not regret the decision at all. Utopic Sage... The main reason that you're playing this is it lets you search for your ZS Ascended Sage from your deck and special summon it. And then you can use that to get your rank of magic. And then this is also for your futures. Uh, so you're very consistently getting to that combo. We also have Prime Math Mech. So we use our basic trio after we've got ourselves a surplus. Uh, we've got essentially our Ascended Sage and we've got the basic trio still in play. You summon Prime Math Mech uh, Alembertian? I think that's how you say his name. You detach three materials from it to get any level four monster. It's going to get your Astral Utopia. You then special summon the Astral Utopia. You've got two uh, two level four monsters to go into a Utopia monster, which then gets your rank up spell. And then you send this and the Sage to the graveyard to make Utopic Futures. And then you, of course, get to use your Astral Utopia to get the uh, numbers protection. So it gives you that very consistent way of getting extra negate. So you can end up on about six, seven forms of interaction in your opponent's turn. We also play one copy of Divine Arsenal Zeus, because we're only allowed to play one. Uh, but essentially, uh, we get a lot of Exe materials on field. So usually if your opponent does anything weird, you can always use Zeus to get out of the situation. And it's got 3,000 attack, so you can generally uh, use this and any other monster, uh, monsters in your deck to end the game uh, when you get it. There's situations where I'll talk about in the combo video for some of your setups, like when you're going to summon, for example, number 41 Babuska instead of your combo, because it's going to be disadvantageous for you to go for your combo. You can summon Babuska in defense mode and the opponent kind of gets locked out of the game unless they've got something. Switch it to attack mode, ram it into something, uh, and then summon Zeus and you've got access to sweeping the field. So it gives you plays if your opponent has interaction. And I think that covers every card in the deck. So Dan, do you have any questions? you can think uh I, I had tons but you answered them as we went through so <laughs> so I, yeah I had other little ones like what does the s stand for because i thought it stood for sage until i realized that their names are all were sage and it turns out that it stands for servers or servants because the w is weapon so these are zexal servants and these are zexal weapons and i thought that was that was pretty neat i did not know that this card got itself back that's really really good it's disgusting i love this card it's uh, a whole lot of fun, and honestly, this deck is tier one material. 
stay with uh, stay with us in the series. Go ahead and watch the combo video and the crafting video if you get through all of that and decide actually this is a deck for you, the crafting video at the end. If you're kind of new to the game, might be relevant to help you build this deck in the cheapest way possible. It is buildable uh, in a free to play way. If you want to reduce the cost of the deck, you can cut the infinite impermanences and play Forbidden Chalices. Those are also very good because you're going first in a lot of your games. And Forbidden Chalice is only a rare, and you probably have a million rare uh, crystals that you could be giving up uh, to play this. Also, you get your Sages and everything. Utopia starter deck in the store. You also get uh, the Ray, the Halberd, and... I'm trying to think... Uh, and Utopia from the structure deck. So there is a budget way of building it, but again, Go ahead and watch the crafting video if you want advice on how to acquire the majority of this deck. So that's gonna wrap up this deck interruption intro. Would you this introduction? How would you feel about not playing this guy and playing a second cross of designator? Because that's the only change I would make. I literally watched you play nine replays and never use this card one time. Yeah, that comes up in very specific situations. By a group that I would go up the extra cross hike designator for min max in the deck. Crosshack Designator, very, very strong card and forces your combo through, and I think that would be the cut I would make for the extra Crosshack Designator. Well, all right. Uh, that that covers everything I was curious about. It, it is just like a modern rank four deck, but it actually has proactive rank fours, which have been in short supply since the dawn of the game, so that's really cool. Uh, being able to weaponize this guy is huge. This card is one of the best cards in the entire game. <laughs> yeah, this card is one of those cards that just shouldn't have been printed. But as long as it is, you should be abused yeah. any deck you're allowed to. Where True King of All Calamities is the very fun dragon, this is the ultra fun dragon, UFD. Even though it's UDF, I'm calling him UFD. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, thanks so much for tuning into this, guys. Uh, this has been a really fun stream. We are going to cut it there. It is uh, 5 o'clock my local time, which means it must be crazy late for you, Matt. You haven't even had daily savings time yet. So, yeah, yeah, it's about 8 p.m. right here now. But uh, it, it's... I, I like the deck. I'm I'm not going to build it because I'm, like, six it's huge ultra-rares shy, and I'm still trying to finish my decks. <laughs> but uh, it, it's it certainly something worth building, for sure. Uh, I just got a question from Megadress before we close. Uh, which is which card is uh, Brigandine? Oh, uh, that's the level 4 trap monster from Phantom Knights. Oh, um, yeah, you could, you could play that uh, if you cut the impermanences, uh, I guess, over to um, Forbidden Chalices. You could play that card as a, an extender. That would then let you do some more stuff with Sage. Yeah, there yeah, is. Uh, I, I've I've seen like a mini Phantom Knight package used, and like they're trying to get to uh, this fella. Oh, because it sweeps opponent's spells and traps. Yeah, and like stuns them for the turn. Because you can like summon it on their turn with the quick effect. Hmm, yeah, no, that's, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, but, it, yeah it's I just, know it's VFD. Like, you summon it on their turn with the rank up magic, and then for their whole turn they can't use card effects. Ha! Yeah, that's actually pretty good. And then on your turn you detach and dust or anything they set. Like, it's incredibly powerful if you can pull it off. But uh, honestly, your deck is working as intended, and you don't need to add any more bricky gimmick cards to make it yeah, win games this, it was already going to win. This one's really ironed out. Like, I, you can definitely run from all the way from rookie to gold, sorry, platinum one on that easy. Like, anytime you get to go first and you set up, it's so hard for the opponent to break it. And even if you go second, uh, you can just doing your combo, your guys end up bigger than theirs, and you usually just smack them down. And then you just uh, sit with all your negates and play. Alrighty, well, uh, that's all the time we have for tonight, guys. But see you in two more weeks for another episode. Yeah, guys, so please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, if you're also watching this on YouTube, please hit that like button. Great content. Uh, you can look out to for full deck features uh, coming uh, every other week. Uh, I'll fit in one of the deck features for one of the fun decks that we're playing on the ladder. Also, for uh, people in Twitch chat, we now, thanks to a wonderful friend, have five new Twitch emotes. Yes, uh, this is something very important. Uh, April Hooley, uh, who was my co-host, official YCS streams for a time, 
did all of our emotes and also does our thumbnails for everything like literally uh, I owe so much to her for all the work that she puts in. Uh, if you're looking for any content for your own channels or that or any artwork uh, I'd strongly recommend you can find her a link to her Twitter in our YouTube videos so you can get in touch directly if you uh, want to I'll throw any work her way. Alrighty. Take care, guys. Yeah, peace out. See you next time.